So, hello and welcome to uh, another session of the Anbana Dev Clash. We are uh, looking for more warfare, we're looking for more interviews, we're looking to have a good time, and hopefully that is exactly what we're going to get. Uh, at some point early on, I'm going to ask if River Doge can come have a chat with us. Um, we had an interview with him last week. This is not going to be an interview. It's going to be a what what the, what the fuck's going on? Because there are things occurring in the world that I do not know. And this is one of them here. News comes quickly to our court. Cries across the de uh, land. Hark this word. The land has been scorched. Across what we know of Halan, we have heard of this happening at a few seemingly random sites. The ground is scorched and the air reeks of acrid sulfur. Brimstone has been found at these places in ways... Uh, it ought not to have been. Fires rage on longer than they ought to have fuel for, and burn a sickly green when the peak of their heat, instead of the normal purifying white. The places are cursed, perhaps even marked. The presence of Infernal seems impossible to ignore. What comes next is beyond the sight of our diviners, and in these dark times it seems all we can do but to be watchful and prepare for the worst when hell is let loose. There is an thing occurring. And thing do be occurring. So, what he's talking about, and if we... I need to go to a terrain map mode for this. Across the world, we have things like this. Red scorch marks upon the land. We have some here. We have some here. Uh, can are relatively untouched? Or rel by relative, I mean they were untouched. I feel like that's a little bit cheeky. Uh, some down here, up there. Uh, we have... Yeah. What this is... I don't know. Scorch marks. But, uh, do we have any burned warehouse? Is that it? Blooms? No, I mean... Let's, uh, check another province, see if you've got anything... I wish to know what the hell this is. Why are Dames Tear? Is it just popping in Dames Tear areas? No. It doesn't look like there's any modifiers as of yet. But there is certainly invisible flags upon this land. And what this is, I I do not know. We will have to find out. Uh, and there's also this. There, There is also... Th this exists. And I mean... I, I've played... I've played the Elder Scrolls games. I know what this is. I'm pretty sure everyone knows what this is. But, you know, for copyright reasons, it is, it is not that. It is a... Hell gate. Uh, interestingly, though, I don't think this is actually popping up in an area with... The hell. This is this is just here. So maybe we could find some. Oh, there's actually. Oh wait, is more popping up? Because this I don't believe this was here before. There's more. I did not see that before. Okay, interesting, interesting. Any more hell gates? Any more hell gates? I want more hell gates. I am curious. Uh, somebody has gotten a um. A notification, or not a notification, a uh, an event saying, Through the sacrifice of my own flesh and blood, the chosen apostle has been released from their pact. Look towards the future, for we must prepare for the coming crisis. Oh, that's a divine interve intervention event. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know what the what the story is here. Let's uh, tag on to Marhold and see if they've got anything to do with this. Not really. Uh, Hammerholm is a player. Um... And I guess they're going to be the ones to have to deal with, you know, the the gate. The tail gate, London. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, you thought you saw a, a behelet in the gacha menu? Uh, I need somebody to open the gacha menu so that I can uh, take Anganda. Uh, generally, when I say that, Wag is the one that's like listening to my stream, so he might he might be kind and open the gacha menu for me real quick. Call, calling all Wagensus. Calling all Wagensus. Open Gacha, please. 
Oh no, I don't think he's listening this time. Oh no. Uh, either way, well, someone's probably got- Oh, Bim Lau is back! Bim Lau has returned to Bim Lau. I mean, at some point I really want to talk to uh, River Doge about this, because a wag opened it now. Haha. -ha. Uh, I don't, I don't know what we're really looking for. But yeah, the whole the whole thing is really cool. Um, we'll see about getting River Doge down here, and he, and he can perhaps. I imagine he won't want to spoil everything to do with it, but uh, he can potentially come and explain what the fuck's going on. Because I don't know. Um, wait, there is an and there is an player war kind of instantly going on here, um, but it looks like they're just beating on the command again. That's way less interesting than I previously thought. Thought, thought even. Um, but yeah, uh, I have with me our Monistan. So hello there. How are you doing? Hello, sir. I'm doing pretty well. Good. I'm glad to hear it. So, uh. How about you tell us about what it is you do um, on Anbana and yeah, what? Tell us about yourself. Yeah, sure. So uh, my name is Armand. I am the Kenar lead um, for for Amadar EU4. Um, I started back in about 2022, whenever I was um, interested in like furthering the deep woods and finding out that why is the portal not accessible? Yeah, as did many people. Uh, that was kind of where I got my start. Um, and after about a year and a half of, of working in the deep woods and hanging out with Jay and all the other folks, I um, actually got promoted to lead um, in December of uh, 2023. Oh, so nice. I've been lead for about, yeah, so I've been lead for about four-ish months. Okay. Um, and, and during that time, I've been working very hard at the team to dispel the concept of the infamous counter lock. Uh, we are, in fact, a fully functional battle station. Um, I'm not sure yeah. how, how much I would call it a myth. Considering how there's there's not been a whole lot of like new mission trees and such going on for Canor for I think as long as I've been um like really invested into the mod. Uh but hey, if 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 that has been dispelled, myth or not, then that's that's very good to hear for me at least. I mean, fair enough. Very fair enough. I the very first thing I wanted to do was to add a mission tree to the deep woods, and I was firmly uh, rejected. <laughs> we'll say that. Um, so, you know, you're not wrong. But I guess it, it's to say that Canar is on the move once more, and that we are looking to, um, you know, catch up for lost time. That's fair. Because from from my experience, like I I have played in Canar. With I imagine the majority of my games, but I feel like the majority of people probably share that sentiment and for me the mission trees there they do seem like they were made a long time ago um there is certain things that are uh, anbanar is doing nowadays that um are just like a little bit more advanced a little bit more um more things going on um so is it going to be the case that you're looking at countries that don't have mission trees and giving them then or are you also going to go back and, say, refresh mission trees that are kind of showing their age? Yeah, so, um, yes, and, I guess, would be uh, the corporate term. <laughs> uh, but, so, definitely um, between whenever people were kind of learning how to mod in Ambinar, learning how to organize, as well as just not having as many fun tools in the toolbox, because, boy, has a lot of things happened at EU4 over the last gosh 10 years i don't know how old this game is now yeah um so definitely that like recognition that that things are older our like driving principle is about building the world right. and about making sure that whatever we add is is not just okay this is adding for eu4 because uh, uh this thing called project caesar is coming and eu4 will not last forever <laughs> um but at the same time recognizing that hey like Whenever you have uh, national ideas and, and you know the big tags of Canada, like or like Laurent or um, Wex have like two sentence national ideas and like these are flagship tags, right? Yeah. Uh, that that's not going to fly anymore. Um, so certainly, I would say that we're focused kind of on both, meaning that we want our cake and eat it too. 
yeah. uh, and, and adding and refreshing content. Um, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, are there any tags that you're... I don't know. I, I don't know if you're able to like say, "Oh yes, we're working on this tag. It's going to be really cool. Look out for it in a couple of months." Is there anything like that that you can like point us towards to keep an eye on? Certainly. Um, so right now we're focused on Scan, and so refreshing like the national ideas for the various orcs, actually giving them lore and not just being like random, you know, go and die tags or in. I guess in this case, since orcs are so powerful, they go and kill everything yeah, and true. don't do anything. Actually, <laughs> um, <depressing laughs> <and> so. <laughs> um, but with that SCAN kind of Eastern focus at the moment, we do have kind of two other fronts going, which is Grudy and the Deep Woods. And we've actually had like a province refresh. We're adding um, yes. like forest trolls and like Valkyrie harpies and Grudia. Uh, in the Deep Woods, uh, the orcs are finally getting mission trees directly like not just like oh you know you play and kill, kill everything and then become emerald orcs or industrial right. orcs right um so that's kind of us you know getting our our foot in the door when it comes to like mission trees uh one of my teammates is making something for Kevin blood um right. there's also a couple of other ones um like for Aryan. And then I think there was at least one at one point a proposal for Wyvern and Heart as well, which was like the Homelander country, essentially, is what Jay was wanting to go with it. Um, so that's on that front, kind of where we're going at the moment. I once de yeah, definitely on. excited for um, the Wyvern Heart because is that not the canon tag that actually wins like Northern Escan and exists yes. in Victoria Three? Um, um, but doesn't have any content for it. It felt a little bit strange to me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So Wyvern Heart actually kind of had a reconceptualization last year. Okay. Where um, we, I think the old was kind of like it was, you know, they're they're vermin, right? Uh, vermin, I guess it's not vermin. I'm using the American pronunciation. <laughs> they're 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 no, they're brave, no, brave like great man theory kind of style, like origins yeah but like with many things as scan like what happens when you pervert that right mm -hmm. and the idea being that like you're going to have like super soldiers and the whole idea of the great man is like yeah if i'm the best then like who else no, no one else matters um and that's kind of represented the most and there's actually a major character in the timeline uh named the the regent of of wyvern heart who is effectively is camir the guy who unites escan's rival okay um and so yeah and so exploring all of that and like what does that mean uh is definitely something we're looking forward to doing that's um, awesome that's yeah. that's uh, yeah getting yeah more content for the for the tags that have none right now especially something that sounds that cool yeah i'm looking forward to that yeah now of course, we know that Escan probably has like some more fresher content. Um, people like love Estil's mission tree um, and so forth. We will be shifting over to Westcan the second half of the year, okay. and yeah, and the the focus and this is where the, the conversation or the idea of coming back to Westcan came out of the Halfling Revolt, right? The small country yeah. and how like they don't really show up, and when they do, it's like eh, whatever right people are like oh we should just you know add this or tweak this i'm like no if we're going to do it we're going to go and re overhaul all of it okay. and uh yeah and at that point the like, people got pretty excited and i have a couple folks who are focused on the Atlantic reach and um Lincolnor. and okay. so they're like hey can we like reimagine those areas and like refresh the content there i'm like yeah we'll do a holistic like all of like the western part of Canar, we're going to be shifting over there and really taking um, a closer look on bringing that fancy back out now that we have so much experience and so much energy on the team. Okay, that's awesome. Small Country definitely felt like a tag that, yeah, they do nothing, and then as soon as the uh, Small Country revolts happen, a bunch of tags join the Small Country, a bit like the Netherlands, and then they exist. Um, exactly. So, yeah, okay. So what, what exactly is going to be the... I say exactly. Yes, tell me your exact plans down to the final, <laughs> you know, squiggly bracket. No, but um, what what are the like concepts and such that um are going to go into small country to make them different to how they are now? 
So I'll be honest, we're pretty far out from that at the moment. I've, I've kind of tasked the team to think about it right. while we're you know getting our bearings. Uh, again, talking about that content drought in Canor that I was trying to mythologize, but it, it did exist. Um, yeah. We kind of have to build up those skills and build up you know the new team because a lot of the old guard that made Canor um, have moved on. Right. And so now it's up to up to us new folks to carry the torch. Right. Okay. Um, but certainly, I think that like the limit pushing that you see in like Halas, or what you'll probably come and see in Starhall, or the Adventure rework and Magic rework, yeah. um, you should expect that for for Westcan. Those are the standards we expect. Okay, that's exciting. That is very exciting because, like I said, Kanor is like the flagship area of the mod, and yeah, it has felt it's lagging behind a little bit. So, getting that fresh energy into it, it sounds like a great thing. Of uh, course, that's why that's why the vanilla game is called Canor Universalis. <laughs> yes, for, for sure. <laughs> vanilla is just alt history for Anvana. That's 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 the way it is. True. All right. So other um, than small country, are there any other tags there that you're uh, you've got some interesting ideas for? Yeah. So when it comes to like right now. Uh, at least for myself personally, aside from leading the team, I am focused on my origin, which is the Deep Woods. Right. Yes. Um, and so those who are working playing the Bitbucket might have noticed the Deep Woods eh, got about 75% increase, 50% increase in provinces. Yeah, they did. Um, which has really kind of changed up the dynamic. Before you could unite the Deep Woods in, I don't know, like five years, if you're if you're experiencing it and got the right roles. Um, and it's become a lot more, a lot more dynamic and harder to like just win right now the purpose of that was to kind of give room for like multiple tags rising up and also to give room for a more dynamic situation right what we're going to be looking towards at least i'm looking towards is giving like a refresh to the emerald orc and industrial orc so like the emerald orcs okay they go and conquer and have the world tree but they kind of have a little bit of a like do or die mentality and if you fall behind you're kind of done and of course if they're going to be you know championing the fey well there's fey courts halfway across the world why are they not um showing them the righteous path right okay uh are you familiar with ublig uh, the U goblin ublig's child uh i have seen them in games that i've played but i've never actually played as them so, so Ublig is, is actually a very popular goblin amongst the community because he works with Corrin to free the Deep Woods from the Verdant Vale. Right. Um, and he makes packs with the Fae. Okay. Well, at the moment, there's no mechanic around that, no content about like what happens to the tag and all. So the forest goblins are actually the next after the, the, the orcs to get content. They're going to build into like a patron system um, and really tie into exploring what it would be like to have a pseudo-communistic Fae-related uh, tag. Okay. Yeah. Some interesting concepts coming in there, then. That's, uh, like I say, I, <laughs> I, I, I could be potentially described as a goblin active hater. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't... Th I'm trying to think of all the games I've played in Anbara, I don't think I've ever actually played any goblin tag. I, We're gonna have to fix that, obviously. I, I yeah, I feel like I've never played goblins. I've also never played an orc tag. What? Really? How in the world? Uh clearly I am just a you know humanity supremacist or something. I don't know. <laughs> uh or, you know, Humans, elves, gnomes, dwarves. I mean, you know, g give me my enlightened races. I guess is enlightened. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, yeah, no, there's there's no real way of saying this that out of context sounds remotely acceptable. Um, but we're talking. <laughs> oh no! Wait, no, that's that's a that, yes. Uh, my chat is pointing out. I played Dak. I played Chain Grasper. Um, okay, there I go. Day one, I went Undead Army, so I I don't know how how goblin we're really talking here but yes i did play chain grasper i mean it's pretty, it's pretty goblin to have some kind of army that's pretty expendable <laughs> true, very true yes skeletons are just very thin goblins 
<laughs> it's honestly very progressive of you, you know, because like they can't even feel the pain anymore. You've made it better for them. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, I mean, I'm not going to ask anyone living to serve in the army because, I mean, you'll die, right? Exactly. So how about you, you work your fingers to the bone and then I take those bones and I use them after. It's, it's clearly just a win-win for everyone involved. Damn, this guy, this guy knows. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, all right. So is Ubik's Child then getting uh, an update then? Um, or is that content already in? It's not in yet. There is plenty of work to do. But yes, Ubik's Child will be getting, will be getting content updates. I'll probably tie it in with whenever the patron update comes up. Okay. Um, to really kind of like showcase the mechanics. Okay. So may maybe that'll be my... Uh... For a step into being a, an actual goblin tag. There you go. That's exactly. <laughs> don't ignore the Dwarvar. Don't worry about all the good work they're doing there. Stay in, stay in Kanor and you'll be well rewarded. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, I am playing in Kanor right now in the multiplayer I'm in. Because, you know, yeah, if you're working on Kanor, clearly you got, you're going to have to look at the gnomes, the, the gnomish hierarchy. They're just, they're so weak. They just, they definitely need uh, just a giga buff, like, right now. Um, definitely... Mm -hmm something that, that that you should be definitely looking into preferably before my current campaign ends and we can you know <laughs> no um i'm i am yeah, excited i'm excited for the for the changes for sure oh absolutely and 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 to that point when we talk about like that holistic rework you mentioned the gnomes but you forgot their their wonderful counterparts the kobolds as well um I've never played as the kobolds either <laughs> fun, fun fact there is no lore on the kobolds like be before 1444 like literally we, we, were, we were looking to update the national ideas to pair for you know the west can focus uh -huh. and we're like who are the green scales and then everyone kind of shrugged like all right i guess we're figuring this out <laughs> okay i mean I mean, I know the gnomes have some lore to do with the kobolds, like, kicking them out of the dragon uh, dragon coast. But to, for the kobolds themselves to not have that lore uh, seems a bit strange, for sure. Yeah, yeah. It's it's peacefully relocating them to their to their mountain homes, is what they do. <laughs> oh, yes. that That's exactly what I did in my gnome playthrough. Um, I... <laughs> I relocated all of them to deep kobold I uh, just have had every single kobold just very peacefully and totally not uh, evilly uh, marched over to deep kobold -erd. So I made that like 30 production development and then I accepted them. Um, it was... It was it was a feat. It was certainly a feat. A feat, all right. That's one description of it. Yes. So, totally not analogous to any situation that's ever happened anywhere no. else ever, for sure. No, no. Um, obviously, in Ambinar, there's only Rainbow and Sunshine. And, Actually, um... they got gnomed. That, that's just the the way of it. Yes, get gnomed. That's exactly it. They but just, um, they absolutely, absolutely, when you call out like the hierarchy, you know, needing to get you know, a refresh in the content, it goes back to like. If we're going to go into an area, we don't want to just, okay, like, refresh the mission tree. Like, let's let's get some memorable experiences and introduce some cool characters. Because half the charm of Ambinar, or really more of it, is is the world itself, right? Yeah. Like, we want the world and the, and the IP, essentially, to grow and blossom, to be a place where you can explore. We were talking about your favorite game, Victoria 3. We want to be able to explore that and really build into it. Or if we go back into Crusader Kings... Um, and make make it a place where you want to be. Yeah, um, that's yeah. As well, it's it sort of ties back into the idea that Anbanara itself started as um, like D and D campaign, and had this this world is kind of made from like the bones of D and D, um, mm -hmm. and that's D and D is all about making stories. So having the the various tanks that you play have stories to tell is is the way forward in my eyes absolutely um all right um if there is anything else you want to like shout out or uh any anything that you want to like point attention to uh i guess uh it's time to do it i would say yeah if there's two things that people people are listening out to one is um going back to us really looking to 
be willing to rework and like refresh things was the trade rework. So you'll notice that Dame's Crown is no longer the monolith of Doom. There's actually been a breakdown of of um, that node into three competing ones. Right. Uh, so that is something yeah. I wanted to talk about as well that I completely forgot <laughs> to touch on. Yes, the trade rework. I like I say I I've played with the trade rework now in uh, a multiplayer campaign and. My, in my opinion, it is a huge improvement. I am awesome. a big, big fan of uh, just the way that it's split up. Um, sure, we have an, still have an end node, but everything that feeds into the end node is so strong in and of itself that that end mm -hmm. node can often not be stronger than the places that you know feed into it. So, yeah, that is. Is it was it you that came up with the idea for that? Because pat on the back, in my opinion, that's oh. it's so good. Well, well, I would love to take credit. Um, no, I I helped like with the kind of organization, but it was actually Brosar and the Balance team who really drove that. Um, and God, the number like there's there's a Balance channel in in the the, the server. And at one point, it was it was just the Canar rework channel as well. Was the Canar trade <laughs> rework channel? Like they ran so many games. Um, there were some awesome contributors who like made Excel sheet. We had like hundreds of test games where people were like, "All right, what's the value? Is this good? What happened to the hierarchy? What happened to Laurent? Like, like so many scenarios. Um, nice. So just kudos, kudos to those guys. Um, I just so happened to be over on at the head of the team when that happened. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm I'm elated that you, you've enjoyed it. There was a fair bit of blood, sweat, and maybe a few tears when we were making that. <laughs> Scan is another one that got updated as well yeah. relatively recently. This is way better as well. Yeah, is... yeah, you actually have trade in Scan now. <laughs> yeah, crazy. Uh if if only the uh the, the were the one place that I really want them to have a look at changing now is uh Halles. Obviously that's not part of your team, but um if you start in High Barn, it's awful and no one enjoys the trade in High Barn. Uh, you have to either go into the Gulf of Rahad or just be poor. Uh, but no, that's, yeah, fantastic rework, oh. I think, in that one. Thank you. And I, I'll, I'll put in a good word to see what, what our, our my Halas friends are up to, see if they want to follow, follow our lead on, on trade rework. Yeah. Um, going, going back to, I think, the last thing to call out, um, for those who love the world of Ambinar, um, some of the team also spent... A lot of their life, we'll just leave it, a lot of their life, we'll, we'll quantify it on the Escan timeline. And so there is actually a 1444 to 1836 timeline for Escan, where it has all the drama, all the ups and downs nice. of what happens in the in the world. And maybe even some foreshadowing on what kind of mission trees we're going to be looking at in the future. Oh, cool. And is that found on the wiki, or where can I have a? a yeah, so it's it's on. So we we have begun the process of transcribing this unholy word document into the wiki. Uh, if you go to the scan uh, wiki page, you'll actually start to see. So you, you'll get to know the fate of Rogeria, for instance, or the fate of um, what we call the Duke and Son's son, because uh, Dukan uh, Corgus Duke and Son had a son, and okay. he does some pretty badass things too. Um, but the rest of it, if you want to know the full story, uh, you can just hop on the Discord and check out the relevant Canner thread. Okay. But definitely, uh, definitely be doing that. Oh, nice. They've got Escan in early 1500s here. And yeah, it's like the, the three tags that immediately jump out to me um, on this image is Alanor, Wivenheart, and Covenblood. All of which mm -hmm. right now have no content, but are the canon like winners. Um, so yeah, seeing them get some, uh, get some love will be so nice. Absolutely. All for right. you and for everyone else. Yes. I mean, I, I recently had a, uh, a foray into Escan that did not go entirely to plan, but, uh, maybe, maybe I'll go back there, um, uh, when some of the, when, when there's a, a bit of new, fresh content there for me. I look forward to it. All right. Well, thank you very much for coming to chat with us. It was an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Not a problem. Anytime. Cheers. All right. Bye-bye. All right. That was Armonistan, the uh, Canor lead. Uh, Canor lock officially unlocked. We love it. We absolutely love it. Um, but yeah, no, that was... that. That's very, 
interesting um, information there. I'm definitely looking forward to a scan stuff. Maybe I'll play a, a Deep Woods Goblin in the future. Uh, but right now, I would like to know... Um, what's going on here? So uh, maybe we will have an uh, and chat with someone real quick. Um, eh, 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 where is River Doge? I wonder. Can I go and jump in there? Because he has taken Karguin's Varmha into baby jail. And uh, I am going to see if I can go chat with him. And we'll see about that. Um, Alright, I'm going to hop in. Hello there. Um, we have a prisoner and his jailer. Uh, what's going on? Um, so, this is definitely not because I didn't finish coding the stuff I needed to for this session. And <laughs> Cargoin volunteered his tribute <laughs> to be in baby jail. Um, but... You're probably going to see most of this happen next session. I would say around 1500, you should uh, possibly come tag the cargo in. Okay. Maybe right before 1500. Um, you see, you'll get a little more information there. The portal, for instance, uh, um, in a scan that I'm sure you've noticed. Yes. It's purely architecture. Nothing bad is going to happen there. Oh, yeah, no, for sure. It's it's yeah. just someone from Estil decided to have an art project. Yeah, exactly. That's like they're, they have a little bit extra money, a little extra materials. Um,. And they just decided to throw it into a, a funny-looking portal. Not really sure why they chose that design. It's a little ominous, but mm, just a, just a wee bit. Um, um, it's it's yeah. clearly it's not it's a a, a copyright-free uh, hell gate. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. Wait, Cargo, that one actually is copyright-free. <laughs> I mean, in theory, this it was inspired, but it's yeah. made. From scratch. Mm -hmm. It was made from scratch. That one was. Uh, have you seen my models, actually? <laughs> yeah, I did just see them, and I <laughs> Those aren't really like them. Is it? It feels very RuneScape, but maybe that's just the yeah, low poly count. I'm turning my, I'm, I'm turning my units back. Oh, see? that's so cool. I kind of want like a poly a count RuneScape reminiscent RuneScape. of all of the other tags in the world, but I want that. Like the winged helmets. They're so. Oh, they're so. Yeah, it's it's from it's from the uh Fremican Fremican Which one is it? It's the it's the it's the Grandmaster quest that gives you the helmet. I love it. I um, love it. But the I mean honestly Cargoon, what if we made a RuneScape model somehow? <laughs> I mean I, would I mean I'm pretty that. sure it's like copyright prone, I'm not sure. No. So I don't, I don't actually know if Jagex would care. I have a question. <laughs> Go for it. What's all this? What's all this red on the ground? What's all this? I I read um, I read the start of the so I don't actually see anything. Mm, okay, okay. So, what happened to Azkasur? Um, you know, actually, I feel like that, again, this is like someone's art project. They just decided to spill stuff on the ground, though. This time, that's a lot. That's a that's a huge area to spill stuff. That's like yeah, they had a lot of dye. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they getting it's this dye? You know, it, it's in the river, so it's been like staining the soil. Clearly, the price of dye needs to go up. Let's see. There's a, there's a few locations, right? If you look in like the, the on Onakuri, there's a. You can see it up there. You couldn't see it at the beginning of the game because of the the winter. Right. At least I couldn't. Um, if you look in Yin, there's a little bit in Yin. Uh huh. If you look in Sarhal, West Sarhal, there's a little bit there. Yes. If you look in Yezomora, there's a little bit in Yezomora. If you look in Goed, <laughs> yeah, a little in the, Goed. Goed's is the brightest of them all. Yeah, I think it just stands out the most, most likely. I feel like I should have another chat with like Elefante because he was talking a lot about the, uh, the the, not infernals. What is this? The hell people. Uh, and I feel like that was referenced in that startup event. That no, the infernals are the hell people. Unless there's is, are they called are they called right infernals? I, I, can't, I feel like it, yeah, the infernal court is the religion right. of the game right now, or like the they're like the the. the, the the mirror of the regent court except i think the infernal ones are supposed to actually be real uh, real demons hmm. or whatever Look, devils or demons I actually don't know which one they are i feel like a demon invasion is something that and but i could just like have as a th yeah no this is this is the thing that happens in the world and everyone gets to deal with it um this yeah, ain't this ain't your never... standard eu4 boys that's basically things gonna happen 
I mean, in, in reality, um, Anvenar probably could have some sort of in, in, infernal invasion. The <laughs> adventuring system, that, that's one of the catastrophes we discussed was yeah. infernal, like an infernal invasion. Actually, as one of the potential ways that infernal court religion is available. Um, but I know they have some plans for mechanics for how it spawns in. I'm not exactly sure what, what that is, though, at the moment. Yeah. That'd it's a pretty be... interesting religion. It's uh, There's one one aspect that is like objectively stronger than the others, so I'm pretty sure they're going to rebalance it. Are there any infernal court provinces that I can look at? I imagine no. No, it doesn't. The religion is commented out in Big Bucket. Okay. It, it has like art and everything done. But I guess like when Mordhall development stopped, the religion got commented out. Okay. But um, theoretically, you know, the Infernal Court religion could potentially have visibility uh, within the next session or two. Looking forward to seeing that then. I mean, the idea of having um, that kind of thing happen is is kind of cool for me. It's, yeah, I had a um, comment here from on Twitch. Um, the the Obsidian Legion. Yes, the Obsidian Legion is like quite different. That but, could be yeah. turned into a catastrophe as well, though. Instead of it being, you know, one tag has breached the calcite layer, it'd be like one ta tag breaches that layer and then it pops up for everybody to deal with in mm. the Serpent Spine. I would, I'd be cool with that at least. That's yeah, I mean, I could talk feeling. to. I, I plan to talk to Oiris about the expedition system and the obsidian legion and how that would interact with the adventure system if it would right so it's a big if i don't yeah. i don't know if he has interest in that um i think it like in some ways it could work but maybe it could work as like a like a a sup not a not a supplement what i'm saying uh i guess supplement would be the word right where it adds on to it it's not necessarily changing it or replacing it it's just like an extra layer though right to add. maybe like the obsidian invasion still pops up in a province but other holds get these like aws that maybe actually contribute to helping the obsidian legion if they're successful right yeah something like that'd be really cool but um Car cargoin would talk uh, 3d models you know but <laughs> cargoin's shy um you know it's, first I, of all sure? i'm i'm hungover all right <laughs> yeah Car that's part of why yeah, cargoin agreed to this is because <laughs> they knew they'd be a bit incapacitated today yeah I'm, have I'm, you I'm, seen I'm, the balloons the phaeton balloons yeah like, i love the phaeton balloons okay. as soon as they were in i'm like okay phaeton is my next campaign so i had a i had a run as them yeah cargoin has um is working on a model for the leech dens as well there's a oh a interesting leech father there's a leech father model that's actually being added jay you, jay, you gotta well. add back the leechman look i made a model and it's really cool <laughs> you gotta do it jay come on jay it's it's not quite like an actual leech father but it's like tentacles slash leeches that are like strewn across the leech dens okay that's branching out from a certain place okay that's cool i like that Argon, it's almost finished uh, from what I saw. Like, the, like the model itself is almost finished. I know it's pretty much a pain to animate it, but yeah, I, I just need to fix up uh, because uh, there was a change in design that uh, Jay wanted. So uh, I had yeah. to do that, and we were to too tentacly it. not leechy enough. <laughs> mm. Yeah, Fair. it was more tentacle than leech, and now it's it's gonna be more leech uh, and tentacle. Naturally, you can't you can't get away from the tentacles, really. Yeah, what's your uh, if you had like one type of model change, Lambert, what would it be? Like addition or revamp oh. of something? So I had one. I had one in mind for the longest time, but it actually did get reworked relatively recently. Um, I was a big, uh, not hater, but like I really didn't like the um, the Bulwari elves using the samurai models. I really didn't like that at all. But uh, mm -hmm. then they changed to the new Elven models that Ibavar still has, and they're absolutely gorgeous. Uh, so I'm happy now. So I models the, the main one that I wanted already done. So happy. Yeah. Uh, I'd say the next one that I really want to see is maybe dwarves, um, because you know, sure, you're, the models that they've got right now, they got beards. Sure, I guess that works. But like, they're still really tall. Um, yeah, I feel I'd, like you I'd could just see them with like the squishing. Dragon Age. Have you have you seen like Dragon Age Origins art before? Uh, probably. The doors there are very metal. If you look up, um, if you look up the Legion of the Legion of the Damned or Legion of the Dead from Dragon Age, uh, their appearance is like exactly what I would think of when I think of the Obsidian Legion, for instance. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. They're very base looking, but I can imagine like that kind of appearance fitting in the Anbanar because it, it fits with the architecture that they went for with like the loading screen art, where it's like very angular. Right. Yeah, I sharp. like that. That would work. So I would. I would, There was actually um, so there was a 3D model in here before that showed off some like door. Uh, they did some dwarf armor art. It wasn't for like by U4 standards. It was it was like too high res and stuff. Right. So it wouldn't have worked in U4, but it, it was very cool looking mm. as like a kind of a reference point. I mean, it could have been just baked down to a lower poly mesh, but well, the, the biggest problem with that model right now is not when if it fits or not. It's that the death has disappeared. Yeah, they got they got swamped with with school, unfortunately. Yeah. They were, I was working on some stuff in the uh, the actually the, the we were gonna do like the hubs in the FLI. Right. Um, have like actually have like some sort of like warp, warped looking trees that change with the attunement, but that was put on put on the burner. I think the first thing that what they were gonna do was some more buildings, right, uh, Cargwin? Uh yeah, they they were working on the uh, like the dev buildings you have and the overall the, how your city grew, uh, but changed gotcha. them to fit the dwarves. So it was like small, Did semi stronghold no? holdy buildings because right now you have just normal buildings in in the gotcha. bar of our. I remember I last time we talked, Karaguin, you were um, working on centaur models. Oh no, it, it came up. <laughs> fuck, fuck. <laughs> I ran from the centaurs. They're too quick. Yeah, I got side sidetracked a bit, so... And, and like, I, I don't do that much lately for Unbenar. I, I had a big uh, break, and now I'm a bit swamped with uni, so... Fair enough. Yeah, I cannot really say I'm gonna do anything. But that's why I'm focusing on like these smaller projects, which is funny models for the Dev Clash because it's just fun and keeps me like not rusty. And right. also the smaller models like the tentacles and the uh, FLI. And the, I mean, the uh, not, not Minecraft uh, models. I mean, the Minecraft ones is like an hour of work, right? Right. <laughs> and and <laughs> making well, centaurs to steal the model. <laughs> hundreds. Poly count in uh, the double digits, definitely. Yeah, I'm actually curious, Karguin. The size of the models you added this time was like 100 megabytes, right? Because you didn't. Really? Yeah, the, the 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 folder size increased by like almost 100 megabytes. No, no, no. That's not. Let me just check quickly. I, I have. <laughs> you can look at the GFX <laughs> folder. It's like 800 megabytes now. No, 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 no. I can look at your PR and see how much you got it once I. No, I can just check the folder. It's the oh. <laughs> folder. It, it's 70 megabytes. It's not that bad. Oh, I wonder. 70? Yeah, yeah okay. So... <laughs> 17. Oh, I was gonna say I don't know then. I don't know where the size came from. Don't update it. Yeah, but I I did put in accidentally the the uh, unused textures in there. I, I put in the whole folder that's oh, with base used, textures. Okay. That's so what... actually, without that, it would be only yeah. The, the base textures are thirteen megabytes. Yeah, that's the problem. Yeah. So when you are ready to like explain what what all this red stuff and the portals and all that is about <laughs> uh let me know because i am yeah, I'll, I'll very curious you. for sure i think 15 oh someone's i think we're actually supposed to be having a hot join right now maybe i'm dumb um when you and what's that yeah we I'm have gonna... a couple of people that weren't able to make it in due to PC issues. Yeah, I'm gonna see if I can grab a chat with uh, Taters and Wagensu. Gotcha. And, uh, One, uh, I will be bonking Taters at some point to let him know about the hot joins, but other than that, yeah. Sure. Alright, okay. I will chat to you in a bit then. Oops. Bye bye. Bye bye. Alright, I'm gonna poke those guys. And uh, potentially we can have a talk about some various things. Um, I wonder, actually, are there any tags that would actually be able to open up the menus that I would want to look at? Because at the moment, I don't actually think there are no tags with... Uh... So basically, what the thing I want to talk to them about is um, the artifice system which was recently updated and changed and something that i've been experiencing with my gnomish hierarchy run that is so incredible i actually just adore everything about it um but unfortunately i don't think there's any tags that actually have artifices right now uh let me see can can you open this 
Uh, let me see, is River Doge capable of doing that? Um, he's currently chatting to some people, so maybe if he hops into a, a, a channel, or hops, moves into a different channel, then uh, we can ask him about that. definitely unpause and go to like the late part of the month uh just oh too late i was gonna yeah, say you should go say. until like the 29th of the month <laughs> yeah i was gonna say i was gonna say the same thing <laughs> um question Wait, what? river dodge with all of the fancy buttons and doodads and such that you have on your tag um, mm -hmm. is it possible for you to give a country access to the artificer system so that I can look at it while I talk about it? Um, you could go look at one of the AI gnomes, but they wouldn't be able to press the They're button. They're all dead. Yeah, they also think, wouldn't be able to press I, the button. Yeah. I think goblins it's, probably will have it soon. Yeah, I, wait, Seb, you became a, a technocracy, uh, right? I'm a technocracy, you can see on mine, yes. but you don't want to see okay. my country because it's kind of bad. Right now, I've got I, I got fucked by ING. Shut up, Seb. It's, I it's... got fucked by ING. You have a gold hold. Shut up. <laughs> I know. It's so fucked by RNG. Gold hold. So it's it's Jover. Well, that was it's straight up no, Jover. No, see, that was that was Jelly's RNG. You wouldn't get it. Was not I'm gonna bonk uh, taters. All right, no, no, no. Seb. It, then, if you curse. wouldn't mind, I'm I'm gonna be talking to Wagensu and Tater soon about the Artify system. Um, if you could like like eavesdrop on my stream, and when I'm um, if I if I say to open a menu, maybe you can open a menu for me. Uh, sure. It will be a delay because you the stream delay. Naturally, but, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's perfect. Uh, well, whenever you mute, I'll unmute your stream and mute myself. Oh, actually, Taters is going to have artificery available after he integrates Luiup. Um, so two or three okay, years, and better. then I'll have a chat with him. Okay, fair enough. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm too busy, uh... Coping. <laughs> yes. Coping on your gold hold. <laughs> it's never enough, Lambert, my insatiable greed. Yeah. This, this is really your initiation into, uh... Becoming an official <laughs> Anbanar modder instead of just an unofficial Anbanar mod enjoyer. <laughs> Gold hold on Scom dear. Oh, yo, the new the new doodads in, the new dig thing at the top instead of having art for the. Actually, do I like that more or not? Oh no. Got a dig. Um, I just. Okay. I just haven't put it in because messing with anything involving like UI or like pictures just gives me PTSD. That's fair. Um, but I, I'll try to add it in in my period of modding. I'm I'm trying to decide: do I prefer having this here, or would I prefer having like literally the art of the hold? Because the art for the holds is really nice. Um, actually, we have a player war that I am going to go and spectate after this hot join. Well, yeah, let me, before you go, do let me know, uh, by, like, Monday or Sunday, because I do plan to have that period be a block period, where I don't want to be, like, talked to too much. Okay. So. Alright. That'll do. Alright, enjoy the rest of your coping. <laughs> Always. <laughs> See ya. So. All right, we'll get this out of the way, and then we have a war between Telexmei and Naleni. Uh, so, blood will in fact be spilled, and that is exactly what we are here for. Get Trashbot and Blazy in uh, on Galean, and I don't know who Blazy is playing. I don't remember who Blazy is playing, but we'll. Uh... You can swap between the art and the digging UI. Okay, all right, that's cool. That's cool as shit. Uh, we'll go and see if the, we can find a button for that now. Oh yeah, Blazy's uh, Ibavar. Thank you very much. All holds that roll gold are gold holds. Yes, that's cool. Um, I actually don't think I've ever re-rolled a hold either. I generally just go with what I get. Maybe that's maybe that's a terrible idea. 
can kind of re-roll it every year if it's your first hold. Or every two years, I guess. Usually you get something good, to be fair. Yeah, true. Like, I really like um, copper for gold hold. It's really nice. So is iron. Actually, it's, one, it's maybe copper or iron. I can't remember which one does the construction speed. Iron does that. Okay. What does copper do? I remember copper doing something good, I think. Some tags get a mission to change their holds good anyway. True. Um, yeah, but we'll see. Iron is construction speed. Copper is recruitment speed. Oh, yeah, recruitment speed is dog shit. <laughs> it's real bad. It's real bad. Oh, Blazy's on Corvuria. Did you click the wrong province? I feel like potentially the wrong province was clicked. I had Blazy in chat a moment ago saying he was on Ibavar and now. Uh, from what we've been told, basically reroll any hold that isn't your main hold that isn't being threatened. Mithril, gold, and iron are super good. He misclicked. But can he just then click off and onto the new one? Unless they click ready, then I don't know. I don't. I actually don't think I've ever hot joined into an EU4 game. Or if I have, it's been very, very rare. Okay. Um, let's have a look here. Oh, yeah. He's switched over now to this. So what is the button to switch the UI then? Is it potentially, um, okay, is it potentially this button and it switches between them? I imagine that seems pretty, yeah. Yeah, that definitely is it. Okay, that's cool. I really like that. Man's making 20 ducats alone from uh, the gold. Interesting. Um, all right, let's go and have a look at Telexamei. They are at war with Neleni and also with Verkal Gulen, though I'm not sure how much Verkal Gulen is going to be able to take part. Uh, Numbers-wise, we have 26,000 Telexamei troops and a roughly equal when it comes to the other side as well. Uh, oh, there's another 9,000 uh, here, though. Uh, will we get... Mad combat and fat warfare. There's a highland fort there. Would be a good idea to fight them on that. Unless you have a mountain that you can fight later. Um, going to siege. I don't know if that is the play. Maybe have the the combat before the 6,000 manages to uh, get in and to take part. Um, but yeah, sky domain here. I'm not sure if there are... Uh, what what you can get from these, but maybe there'll be some warfare um, bonus that they can get. Telexa May is also taken offensive, though they have not finished. Uh, they get special unit, force limit, but no special units. And there we go. I, I, I feel like maybe, potentially, I may have just reminded Telexa May that they have church aspects to, to use. Gets an extra bit of morale of armies, gets a little bit of extra manpower from To Bless the Blooded. Uh, which was cleanse the sins of Yitwiwaga. Um All right, so Neleni, uh, what have we got here? They're also Sky Domain, so they could do the same thing. Um, and I, <laughs> they're they're having the battle that I told them. To, I feel like I'm influencing both sides here. I feel like that's what's happening. Um, I feel like maybe they're. Mm, no, Telexa May has won. It was still the best option, and maybe if this army was with them uh, when they went to attack, there would have been more of a chance. But Neleni, at this point, I feel, needs to bite the bullet, take some loans. They don't have any loans right now. Um, they can't get any from their estates, which is unfortunate. 
Uh, but they need some form of mercenaries. Um, they're not even at their force limit, for example, which would be something that they maybe should do. They're also at war with Arawukalin, so actually, I, I take it back, it is kind of all over. Uh, is Awuklin coming in? Yes, Awuklin is 100% um, joining the fray. They are transporting their troops 5,000 at a time. Actually, no, they're only transporting to Kleptilini. Uh So, actually, I don't know what the plan is there. Maybe they're not going to come over here. Uh, but, yeah. I think Naleni should take his army. Yep, he's got an allow attach on. Beherika is a vassal? Yes. Get your morale back. Um, at this point, you're probably better off waiting until they try and get your capital. Uh, Age of Green Tide is still on, so hopefully your splendor will be enough to get adaptive combat terrain, and potentially you'll be okay. Uh, potentially. Uh, it's it's a long shot, though. Uh, next defensive idea won't help, so that's kind of irrelevant. Uh, but let's see, is Brokogulan attempting to make any efforts? Oh, snap. They are. Okay. This is very good for Naleni. That's 22,000 um, coming in. This sucks, though, <laughs> that he's uh, going to be losing quite a few troops here, or quite a few colonists. Um here as well. How many has he got? It's almost finished, and now it's going to lose 100. That's unfortunate. Is that a unique Verkul Gulen model? Uh, it's probably just no. Also, Mercs have their own models, so that could be what we're looking at as well. So, this war, I think... It depends. If Awukulun gets involved then I do think it is over for Nalini. However, if not, I think there is a chance. Uh, Fort-wise, there is no... There is no fort for Verkul Gulen to get caught on. They simply need to get vision, and they can walk all the way there. Or no, they can't. Because there's a fort here and a fort here. But if this is controlled territory, maybe they'll be able to walk straight into it, ignoring the fort. Maybe, potentially. Rombeni is here. They're at war with Yezelmora. Okay. They're not attacking the uh, those guys. Uh, Telexa May can get some fat fort defense here. Might be necessary against the uh, dwarves. Yeah, it's going to take Verkogulin so long. Uh, I wonder, can we tag over to you? Right-click on you. Uh, we want... Request to share maps of Drexoret. This is... Um, a little bit of a hint. <laughs> I feel a little dirty for that. I feel a little dirty for that. <laughs> oh, and a bit of uh, siege ability there would be uh, very nice. I feel, I feel a little, I feel a little bit. It's a little. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, maybe I should stop giving hints and just commentate on the, the current occurrings and happenings. Um, but yeah, this is as good a chance as Nalini are gonna have. Uh, they do not have the defensive edict on their capital. A hint, a hint, a, a wink, a wink. You know, you know. Um, yeah, they are not going to be able to get here. They need to take an fort. Uh, but wait, hang on, let's have a look. What is the siege ability of these dwarves? We have a siege ability of 22%. Whereas Telexa May's uh, fort defense 
of 4%. So yeah, it's it could be worse. But maybe it looks like here we've got them linking up. I'm not sure how much that is the play. Instant barrage, 34 day siege ticks. Um, Jax May has seen it. And they've added the defensive edict here. Naleni has also added the defensive edict. And we're looking at uh, siege ticks of how far. Oh, no. They've uh, moved off. Uh, but the problem is, this army is not going to be able to get over here. This might be useful, actually. You wait until the rebels have gotten a lot of siege progress on uh, on here, and then you basically take over their siege. Uh, but yeah, but the only place they're going to be able to link up is if both of these armies try and siege Walagnet. That is basically the only play here for them to link up. And if you turn around, as soon as you get here and you turn around and go to Wag oh, well, Agnet, we'll know. We'll straight up know. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Oh, no, 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 they're not. They're going, they're going here. Into the, dry why Drylands? If you're going to be attacked, you want to be in the, no, 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 no. Why? You're giving up your advantage. There is an advantage that you have just lost. You could have been attacked in the Highlands instead. Okay, so... How good is Dwarven Defenseness? The shock damage received. And how far are you going to have to retreat when you inevitably lose this battle? Oh no! 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 Wait, they got... They must have gotten a, a morale tick. I thought they were just going to be wiped. Are they going to be wiped? Is the wipe occurring? The wipe is so occurring. The wipe is so here. And a Wooklin is actually joining in as well. They didn't get wiped. But, like... They're so wiped now. And... When you're there it is gone and a pestilence a pestilence upon uh Virgil Gulen. why <laughs> was this necessary he's just lost uh dev in Segdir. and this is something that river Doge has specifically done to him i'm not sure this was necessary but yeah it is it is an fat gg So, uh, this needs to be breached, and you've got one opportunity to, uh, take it. But you definitely need to click this button if you have that button available. Oh, you have zero artillery. Uh, okay, fair enough. Can you get a 7%? Is that a possibility? Is that something we're going to be able to see? No. Who was the attacker in this war? Teleximei was the attacker in this war. And here they come to sound the final death knell. I can't see uh, really any W coming here for Nalini. Going to get attacked by 35,000 troops. Oh, th 32,000, whatever, you know, about 30-something thousand troops. I mean, yes, running away. I don't know if running away is going to be the play. Uh... Wait, they got the fort? Wait, how? I didn't, I did not expect that. I did not expect that. Okay. And they're being navally invaded on their islands, of course, as well. Um, how much debt have we gone into? 148. That's going to help. That is certainly going to help. But 
but there is no escape now. Wait, Neleni has boats here. They've just been inspired more. Oh, wow. They're getting, he's getting all of the buffs. Bit of divine inspiration. So what is actually your morale now after all of those uh, boofs? We have a morale of 4.81 versus 4.3. Um, is there an possibility of a couple more loans and a couple more, maybe, just having maybe the monstrous horde, just that would maybe be enough? They're building boats to try and contest our Wukulin, but I mean, I don't, maybe that was built before, started built before the, uh, the war started. Um... Gulans rebuilt their army from mercenaries. Whether those mercenaries are going to take part, I don't know. But Telex May is losing a bit of money. They've got loans of... A th yeah, they've gone way more into debt than Nalenni have. And I think that might be what is going to change the course of this war. Of course, they also have um, burger loans. So, many of their loans are 1%. Um, whereas, Nalini does not have access to burger loans. What is the war goal? Uh, the war goal is... The reconquest of Medifat. Right here. But yeah, Telex May has also cores on almost all of the vassal here as well. That's useful. If if Telexime, like falls to rebellion, that's gonna be pretty handy. Funnily enough, they could actually march over here and siege this. Uh get this uh five development back under control. Because these guys aren't gonna actually be able to do anything about it. wait, how can you march there? There's a fort blocking your path. Huh. That's curious. That is very curious. Are you able to retreat home? Yes. I know it's controlled territory, but that should not matter for forts. This, this should block... Because if you think... Mm, I don't think this matters. It shouldn't matter for fort uh, control. Huh. Interesting. Okay, maybe I'm wrong. Forts can't project onto enemy terrain, but I was... I'm almost certain that this did not count towards that. Control doesn't count towards that, but maybe I'm wrong then. Maybe, maybe Nilini has a plan to just wait. But yeah, the longer that this waiting goes on, the worse it's going to get, because Awukulin is taking a lot of, um, you know, uh, re uh, reinforcements over here. Are you seriously going to de destroy these uh, rebellions? An exceptional, exceptional decision here. Because uh, now Telexime can put their army on Emot Napas while another smaller army sieges Genkimapai without any worry at all. I'm, this this was not the play. Uh, Virgil Gulen also not interested in coming to help anymore. Yeah, this was, I feel, incredibly silly. What kind of a waste. They did take the next Miltech. Now they're equal on Miltech, though. So now what's your plan? I mean, you kind of have to march around, but... 
<sighs> you gave up your only strong point. Okay. Okay, move to Telexa May here. They can't move forward. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like uh, we have once again reached an Jover situation. It's not good for the Harpies, not at all. Also, Harpies have lower fort defense. Harpy military, minus 25%. So, these siege ticks are taking 18 days only, which is kind of wild. Even with the plus 33%. No roosts yet. Uh, I don't even... Yeah, okay, we have one roost there. But still, like, that's only going up... Oh, that's 121 defensiveness. This this seems unwise. That's a 30k troops on Highland. Religious action can be selected. I don't know which one that is, but... And there goes the fort. What's your plan now? I mean... If Gulen don't help, Gulen are helping. Okay, they're going for Walag Walagnet. Okay. So, is this gonna be a W now? If they have all of their troops together, I feel like this fort is new. How long ago was this fort built? Four years ago. Maybe it wasn't new. This war started after that was built. Okay. There's also the ability to maybe steal this siege. Low legitimacy. Artillery costing more, so that's... I don't know how much artillery they have. Two units, okay. Uh, but they could barrage. They should have enough ships, or maybe not. A Wuklin does not have enough uh, cannons blockading. The great census of all, Halan. Uh, fighting is the highest GDP. Sorry, no, it doesn't. A scale has a high GDP. Uh, fighting does not. Maybe that's, like, second place. I'm not sure. I might say we have the most discipline. The Prussia of Anbana. Um, Kedos River has the most corruption. Awuklin has the highest inflation. Whiten is currently has the biggest navy. Kind of cool. I like it. I really like this census system. And I hope that with uh, Seb playing in this multiplayer, he's seeing the census system and being like, yo, I want that. In my mod, because I also want that in his mod. Uh, but also, the gacha system was uh, done, and Fahnovossi gets Egg of the King. Let's quickly go tag over to him. Egg of the King. He needs. He has clicked this button. Okay, so Egg of the King gives what? Shouldn't it be here if he's selected it? It's gold, so he should. He has selected it, but it's not giving any modifiers. Not sure on that one. Anyway, let's have a look here. They have now linked up. There's like 50,000, so technically they, they do now outnumber their enemies. But these forts, this fort needs to fall before they can literally do anything together. And with plus 70, sorry, plus 80% defensiveness. Oh, I don't know about that one, my dudes. Um, Naleni has 6.4 siege ability. 
you probably should have Rocco Gulen take over the siege. Like, have Nelenny move off and move back on again. Um, case offer from Nelenny. Interesting. Cinema, Medifa, and Rat Akapakadet. So that's these three. Will that be accepted or not? It seems at the moment to be a no. But really, you should be swapping over so that the dwarves are in control of the siege. This is, firstly, a kind of a waste of manpower, but also just put the, just put the dwarves here. Give them the siege. Then immediately rush the rebel fort. Yeah. Because they can see that it's a 21%. Honestly, the dwarves might be better off, like, rushing up, killing these guys, taking the fort, and then rushing back down. Another census... This time for development. Sramiana has 48 development. That's right here. Um, Arukalin has highest base tax. Luciang has the highest production. That's not true. Because I've seen... I've seen... There is 26 production there. And there is 24 there. Maybe this is non-holds. Um... Anvil Wright has 41 total development. That's cool. But yeah, they get uh, bonuses for that. So, um, Tang Xiang has 20 base production, so they get extra taxes. <laughs> Bago Horn has the highest manpower, so they get extra production. But yeah, that's fine. That's cool. Anvil Wright has 41 development. So let's give it three extra development. I'm not sure that was necessary, but okay. Yeah, this was 50,000. It's now down to 43,000. And yeah, unfortunately, um, they those guys took the fort already. This 30,000, what's their plan? No idea. Is there a multiplayer after this? Yes, I'm playing in a uh, uh, post final multiplayer. First session. I mean, they've got 60,000. Uh, the numbers for Naleni are just going down and down, down to 42,000 now. That's why he's taken a lot of loans. They just take a whole bunch extra, or is this the same amount? This is the same amount, so they just got a cash infusion from somewhere. Maybe they were given some money from a Uh and, and Nalini's actually trying a naval fight. I don't know. These guys have ten heavies. And uh, galleys are more betterer here. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe they've got this. They do got this. Got this, in fact, they do. Okay. So, navally, the uh, the big W is for Nelini, which is gonna help. But the troops from Arocklin are already here. Okay, so now they have taken the um, the fort. Um, is there any ability for you to get your cannons reinforced so you can delete this uh, the walls? Uh, it does not look like it. Was by Tators. Uh, is that a hot join? Maybe not. Maybe there will be at the end of the month. But I feel like this is the GG, right? They're they're currently sieging a mountain fort. They've got 16 days to take it. It's not. They're not in time. This. Oh no! Don't don't give them much opportunity to get the 21. percent This is gonna. Be, really? Why are you giving them the opportunity? If they take it on 21, you might lose the battle. They did not. You are incredibly lucky to Lexime. And here comes the final death knell for Nelenny and the dwarves. It's not going well for them, as it shouldn't. 
You know what I'd like to see, actually? Harpies get a bonus to fighting in mountains. That would be cool. That 4k isn't even enough to siege this. Like reverse cav bonuses? Exactly. Like the horde, the horde planes buff. Oh, and the dwarves are retreating. What child? No, not again. Oh no. They did get a morale tick, but it's it's not enough. Not enough. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, Jover. One thing we did just learn is that the canal between Maruvad and Ascension is now open. Though it doesn't look like we can actually see anything of that. But yeah, the, this is now available to be crossed now. Oh, poor Gulen. Like, honestly, they've taken no loans. Gulen's better opportunity or better better contribution there would have been to just giga fund Neleni. If they just giga funded Neleni so that Neleni had the troops enough to fight on their own, they would have done better, I think. Hey, are you? By the way, are you ready for the interview with Taters and Wag? I am. Yes, I can take that. Right. You, you, you feel cool if I drag them in right now? Yeah, that's perfect for me. All right, there you go. Welcome. Good luck. Hello there. What? Hello. How are you guys doing? I I notice you have formed a new tag. It's just cosmetic. I don't remember that being there when I played Phaeton. It's, it's, it's the Yanshan form of it. Ah, uh, okay. Anyway, it's um... It's just the with a different flag. Because we are funny. And we are obviously a gold scale aligned team. True. That's a that's a very fair point. Uh, so yeah, would you like to introduce yourselves and uh, let us know what it is that you do in Anbina? Alright, Tatus, you start. So... I'm a contributor, I'm the art lead, and I'm a balance team member. Uh... Same for, yeah. Okay. Same for me. I am Vagenzo. I uh, I wasn't here before, but I was probably on the stream a few other times. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I am um, and my roles and I'm in a server are mostly for re uh, reviewer roles. Um, I'm experienced contributor. Though. Um, I have content uh, currently at the roles contributor, uh, reviewer, balance reviewer, and systems reviewer, and I'm kind of the go-to person for religions when it comes to systems or balance reviewer side. Okay. Um, so what? I'm, I'm I could be around the bush and say, oh, so what is it that you've been working on and all that? But <laughs> like I, I've already said it in in my chat, and I've already like praised it to high heavens. Uh, uh, just everywhere else. Talk to me about the absolutely delightful uh, Artificer rework, because I, 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 I'm just, I fucking love it. I'm not going to beat around the bush. I fucking love it. It's awesome. That's great. I mean, let's start first where my part kind of is from the beginning of it. Sure. Um, so the Artificer rework actually started a very long time ago. I think it originally started when I joined the balance team and Tatus was also still new. So I think one and a half years ago. By that point, it was just concepts, really. They never got implemented for some reason. And it stayed for a long time uh, like that. And then at some point, I think a few months ago, three or months or four months ago, we were like, fuck it. We just do it. Right. And then we pushed it further. Um, and then it became to in this state where it is now. Um, I think first the question to answer is why did we even do it in the first place? Artificery compared to other systems like the adventurer system was functional, you could say. Yeah. It did what people might imagine uh, it would do. But we were uh, like, nah. It actually doesn't really, because Artificery in its old version was essentially 
completely linked to colonizing Aerodont. Yes. Um, you, you either do it or you don't, and that is kind of your game. There was also no scaling for other techs, for example, or Gulliver. Um, it was supposed to be artificially aligned or Hero Dwarf, as other dwarf, uh, Dwarven hold. Yeah. But realistically, the player has absolutely zero chance to reach Aerodon, nor does it feel great to do this. Um, plus, there are some other scaling things, like, for example, the first invention that you suddenly unlock could be Mechanim Warriors. And you're like, okay, so the first thing I do is we build robot warriors. Yeah. That also obviously didn't <laughs> work well. No, for sure. Uh, it was always a case of, obviously, Mechan Warriors were huge, but um, Vorpal Bullets uh, and the uh, Spark Drive Rifle were always ones that are... Ones that, if I got those, I was pretty happy if I got them early. Uh, and if not, then it was kind of annoying. But, yeah, yeah so... What... How, how did the what you've come up with like how did that come about like um what inspired this particular uh like implementation of it mm. having it being its own so, like ui and and the way that it's unlocked like where did that idea come from okay the ui side the status i would just do the other idea things so essentially we came uh, with the tech tree because like that is kind of the inspiration from it yeah um, very early in the concept, when it first started, like that one and a half year ago, um, we also had this tech tree idea. It was actually around the time that, uh, uh, actually, I think it was Harless released, because, or was it Harless released? It should be, um, where we rebalanced the artificial inventions together. And that was sort of where we came up with the tech tree idea for it. For the progression right and currently it, it feels like more like a tech tree but it took inspiration from uh and sort of took on the style of the stellaris tech tree right that you have to research certain technology levels kind of and once you have researched enough from them you progress to the next uh, tier that is available right oh, yeah that idea come and now data you can take it from the other things or ui and shit so yeah um yeah, we made an AI. I don't know. And in UI, <laughs> I don't know if you have it open. Um, yeah, I, you need to open uh, it for me, unfortunately. I can't. I, I don't have uh, the ability to click your buttons. Okay. Uh, so I have it open now. Yeah. Um, um, so one of the main issues with the, with the artificial system as a whole is that you are stuck with the, with the um, privileges from the from the estate and it gets very cluttered because there are 100 inventions so if you have everything in the list there it's very yeah. hard to choose what you want to enact and what you don't um and it also kind of limits the the estate itself cannot have any privileges because it's so cluttered yes um so with the new patch there are now possibilities to make custom uis yeah and that's what we are used that's what we use now to create this. We used assets from from U4, which we repurposed for the UI. Um, it's actually pretty annoying and complicated to do. <laughs> uh, it was a long work, and we we now made it so that you have all the different generic tiers, which all get their own page where you can choose them. Yeah. And then we have a page for the cultural tier, which is only available if you have something of this culture. Right. And you have a page for the unique tiers. And I, since I'm as fight and have unique tiers, I also get this tier. Otherwise, you cannot click on it. Right. Um, we also made it easier to interact with the system by, by uh, recoding everything and allowing now for like, you can say my tag needs one more possible invention to click, you can do this now with a simple um, variable change, etc. Okay. Um, so yeah, this was one of our goals is to change it so that it's easier moddable than before because the code was a big mess. So yeah, we, we re we've rewritten everything and to make it now streamlined to be used for anyone. All right, that's awesome. Um yeah, one of the one of the things that I had felt with um, the previous system of that Wag touched on was 
not everyone could really make use of artificery because you needed certain trade goods. Uh, you needed to have Precursor Relics, Dame's Tear, Coal, and that's either Conquer, Eardent, or Get Lucky, or Wait Until the Very End of the Game and Get Lucky, um, or have like the, the right positioning. So what is it now that gives you the, the amount of capacity that you want? Um, how has that changed? I guess I'm taking the potatoes. Can you hover over the capacity? Uh, I think Lambert can also hover over the capacity. Ah, I can't in this menu. He needs to go back one menu. There we yeah, go. Yeah, I see we can see nice. the capacity. Yeah, so now we essentially said that everyone has a base capacity, which is also a big change from before. And some other things got streamlined, essentially. So, for example, and now with t over time, you just will have more capacity and end up with more way more than the beginning like this 50 capacity for example is about more than anyone ever got beforehand yes. like 200 to 300 percent but it's like the minimum amount that you need to kind of make use of the system yeah uh, because also i forgot to mention that i'm sorry it now disables the major state as yes. a balance reason so this interaction is also more visible the fight between artificery and magic uh anyway the other things that you can see, especially the relic thing, which was a big issue, I think, right. is now that essentially you have to trade share. You only need a certain percentage of trade share to get a maximum bonus. It doesn't scale into the infinity. Plus, you can also make use of it if you, for example, don't hold the provinces yourself in colonies. You just then probably play a trader republic or something and get a lot of trade share just naturally by existing. Right. Um, or you also get it from the colonies. Colonial tax are not affected, but other people have more ways to increase their trade share. Some people like Dravara tax will naturally not get mo uh, anything from it really, but it's still there in this better av availability because they maybe can get, get something from Halles if someone opens there and digs up a lot of precursor relics. Um, and some other things got changed as well. Like coal, for example, went out because it's more magic tech. Right. In um, I forgot the other name for it. Doesn't matter. Uh, and for example, university also doesn't give bonuses anymore. Right. Oh. Okay, just left. Okay, he probably needs to do something. Sorry. Oh, a hot join. <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, he's the host. Fair. Sometimes has to leave. Um, and. Yeah. I think that is like the changes to the capacity that happened, most of them. And overall, you will pro we actually made a kind of nice spreadsheet from it. Okay. Uh, I will probably send it after the session, so for the video, you can put it in or if you want to. Um, where you can kind of see what m you, ki you will kind of end up with uh, on certain time thresholds, of what capacity you can kind of play around. At oh, minimum yeah. and at maximum with certain, I think only like three or something. Yeah, yeah, I definitely like to take a, a look at that. Yes. Um, so yeah, in like I say, I I'm currently using a version of this system. I'm not sure if it's been uh, rebalanced since uh, between when I have it in my game and the Dev Clash now, or what it might be in the future. But I'm currently playing mm -hmm. with it at the moment uh, as the gnomes, and I gotta say, like, obviously it's it's very powerful. It's very powerful, but that's not really the reason for me like enjoying the system like being powerful obviously is very enjoyable but just playing with the system just feels way more satisfying um and it feels like more tangible these the the ui especially that you've got with uh like these safes unlocking them obviously it costs to unlock uh various ones gold and mana um but it feels way more tangible uh, like you're actually interacting with the system rather than pressing buttons, if that makes sense. Um, so mm. I'm, like I said, just, just for me personally, holy shit, GG, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm very mean, happy. You, you, you play now on the tag which was the most affected by the change. Yeah. And it, it, it was already a tag which was... The, the kobolds are not really able to compete with you. Oh, um, like even without this change, because it's just, yeah, they they are the tech behind on you. So yeah. it's 
it's very easy and yeah this also coupled with the admin with the military change for the couple uh, for the gnomes yeah this was is a bit overtuned we already did some changes to them right to tune that down yeah um yeah what goes you're, into you're currently on the unleashed version so. <laughs> yeah I, I i did sort of notice that a little bit um what what roughly are we expecting in the late game then to have like as your artifice capacity because i at the moment i have i think i've unlocked like one tier three um in the game that we're currently in uh which is 15 30 15 40 ish 15 50 ish maybe um so what kind of like artifice capacity are are firstly the gnomes and then uh, more generally, people are going to be expecting to to get up to in in later years. Okay, so the so everybody who who unlocks artificially early essentially gets one capacity every five years until sixteen fifty. Okay. After sixteen fifty, everybody gets passive increase over time at a very rapid rate. In okay. 1820, you will be at 200 capacity. That is enough to really like, because the the tier threes are like 30 capacity each. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And having seven of those, you're about 210. Uh, so yeah, being able to fill out all those, that feels quite, quite strong. It's very, very quite strong, especially when you have your um all of the other, you know, mission tree bonuses and such that you get in there as well. Um, I've got a question here. Will missions grant permanent capacity going... Uh, are they going to get buffed to account for the higher capacities as well? Or are they going to stick around the same amount? Like, are any uh, mission trees getting updated to go along with their system? So, in general, it's a bit... Uh, obviously, it's not a Steam release version yet, because, as Taylor mentioned earlier, we need to rebalance things. It's a multi-step project for us. For now, for us, and I think we can tra we will transition in so in the short future to the next phase, but currently we're still in phase one, where it's more of the implementation si uh, side, where we right. want to make sure it works and it feels good. Then, the second step is kind of just balancing things. Right. right. Uh, for example, some of the writing is missing in st uh, from step one still. Yeah. I'm not sure. If that, I don't think that finished yet. Um, but I'm not following too closely on the writing. It's in review. Right. Yeah. Okay. So everything's written, but they're reviewing it, and then we, I will implement yeah. it. Right. Uh, the balance, the balancing, obviously, that is another big pro change for it because, as you said, it's too OP right now. There's no <laughs> other way to say it. Yeah. You could have get too much value out of it, but like it's an important thing that it doesn't feel shit. Yes. Like it because it's a, a bit of a balance nightmare because you have to balance for the middle mode, but also where you have half the capacity only, but you also have mages at a lesser rate. Right. Um, and also the full artificial mode. Uh, mode. The capacity helps a lot to regulate that, so we know what is allowed. <laughs> that is allowed. Um, but in general, we need to cut some things. Right. Um, and then the third step is essentially just finalizing. And the third, the finalizing step encapsulates all mission tree things, for example, because they are very specific. There's also the mission tree specific inventions. Yeah. Because they might be too good then after the rebalancing, etc. etc. Obviously, the most mission rewards right now they. From artificial capacity, I think one of the highest, uh, oh no, the highest is our clan. But for example, to put it in, I think it's at 15, which is comparatively nothing. Then Reveri has 11, and Nimsot gets 9 capacity from the mission tree. Right. Uh, that, those numbers feel bad. Yeah. Well. So yeah, yeah they, they get adjusted. That's not enough last, for a yeah. single uh, invention. So definitely, yeah. yeah. That, I mean, yeah, rebalancing is, is part of the process. Um, but... In a way, it also sorry to interrupt you, but it's, no, it's also funny for me to like think about it. How little capacity most mission trees gave out, and obviously you don't want to give out more than the artificer tech that Nims got is. Yeah. Um, and they only get nine, but that is kind of the value number that the artificer or the old artificer system, I should say, expected you to play with, which was really not great thing. Yeah. 
Are there any plans then to add more inventions now that you have this uh, funky UI? Like, if if you want to click on the inventions thing again uh, for me, um, like, for example, on page one, I feel like you, that, you know, the society inventions, you could shuffle those bottom two over to the left a bit and add another couple in there. There's, there is space for that. Um, it, are, are there plans to add more inventions to, you know, give people more options, more things to play with, more toys, I guess? Uh, yes. Nice. That, 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 all um, I needed, one word answer, that's, that's, that's absolutely fine by me. The yeah, free is the best thing that to see it, what we mean. Sorry. I think the, the issue a bit is that um, currently they, most of them are just like statistics, right? There's like reform progress plus 15%. Um, but we're actually using privileges, and privileges are some of the most modable things in the mod. So I actually hope that if we do more inventions, they should be more like interactive, some sort, or like specific for. Yeah, for a specific thing because they're so freely interactable. Right. Uh, all right. This is this is a a question really from. Oh, actually, no, I can actually see it there. Okay, in the version that I'm playing, the golden gearbox does absolutely nothing. Uh, but now I can see that it gives your capital. I think that is uh gives... twenty five dev cost. That's kind of yes. crazy. Okay. G gonna have to ask Seb okay. to update his mod to give me twenty five dev. No, no, no. He's gonna it, say no. This is... This is the nerfed version. Before that, it gave local development cost modifier. No way. Of local <laughs> development cost. It, it, no, that's true. It was a misclick from me. <laughs> I, I wrote it wrong in the code. We, we don't want any occurrences of death efficiency. It's just way too easy to totally get out of bounds. Yeah. Yeah, that would be that would definitely be a bit a bit strong. I mean, there's a lot of things in here that are also still very strong, but for sure. Um, there is, all right, I have a complaint. It is an single complaint. Um, some of the, uh, inventions, when you click them, um, stop showing you the bonus that you're getting. Uh, for example, portable turrets. When you click it, um, before you click it, you can see that it gives shock damage received minus 20 on your artifices. But then when it's selected, that text goes away so you can't actually see it anymore and I, I have a terrible memory so I forget what it does and I'm like oh it doesn't do anything but give me siege ability let's just take that away and, and then I get sad that I have to spend to get that back again uh, that's literally my only complaint everything else is just exceptional like yeah tooltip is it, I mean it's just a lot of work but it's something we're on we're on it so yeah, perfect um, so, what are the kind of unique um, inventions that are available? Like, you have access to that tab, though. I can't see that you have anything in there when you clicked on it. I so... assume I should get one in some years. How long does it take? Something to do with your mission tree, perhaps. Uh, I'm researching one now. Yeah, no, okay. Okay. like some modes. I can explain it a bit with Phyton. Uh, Phyton is a bit of a special case. Most techs get it through the mission tree, like the special inventions. Yeah. Um, but Phyton needs to research them, and he also gets it as special option because Phyton in his menu, um, there are different options for the tiers. If you progress, uh, I don't think we explain. I don't think Shaders can show it right now, except if it maybe comes off cooldown next month or so. Um, but essentially, you can pick different options. Fighting has one specific option, be always fighting related. So you can progress or get your special unique things. Okay. Uh, and I think Tate just apparently clicked one of them. Yeah, I already Which clicked one, but it's not yet researched. I assume it will be in the, this year or the next year, because it's five years, so... Okay. Are there mm. any plans to give... Um, more tags earlier access to the system or is it is that a case of when you would have gotten it before that's going to still be the case like i personally am totally fine with giving earlier access and i think i hope it will be done more but it that's currently not the case right um because it probably the rain will get earlier access now and We'll see about the rest. 
Oh, I can imagine just a lot of every single artifice invention they have is just a different potion. That sounds delightful. Yeah, they all they they even have pictures. Just because you you asked me once about pictures, they have I, pictures. I I do. I I did have an, an idea of uh, of getting art for every single different invention, uh, but then I looked at how many there are, and it's like, oh, that's. That's a whole. That's yeah. a whole lot of uh, different art pieces. That's kind of the issue, right? Yeah, it's just too much. I still kind of want it, though. I still, I still. Sub... Everyone wants it. Yeah, <laughs> but it is a lot of art, and somebody has to draw that because, yeah, no AI. Yeah, I that's guess. The, the main issue. It's just a lot of stuff to do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I it, it feels like. You know, you have this super sexy new system, and then, but to play with it, you have to choose various tags, of specific tags to play with it before, like, kind of just the late game, really, because, uh, what is it, Artificery, the Age of Artificery is what year? No, it's not Age of Artificery, it's linked to Manufacturing, so, okay. so 1615, or once you embraced it, which is like five years later. Yeah. So I, I feel like, yeah, getting people into it earlier is something I'd like to see so that more people get to experience this system, basically, because it is such a cool, like, system in and of itself. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe something to do with the, the, the people who have it early being able to spread it in some capacity or have the technology be stolen or something along those lines would be really cool, I think. But yeah, I I am okay. Here we see. Oh, yes. I, I actually got the event now. Uh, so, so that's a that's a fighting invention. That's also why you have the airship picture where there is the flying ships. Yes, that's cool. And now I will click on. I hope I don't know if you see the events I get thing. Uh, that's happy migrants. Don't care about those. Yeah, yeah no, 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 I'm just like. Yes, I I am seeing your inventions, so, and then you research. Uh, because I'm fighting, I get fighting options. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. That's a very juicy one. I will definitely get this one. I am a big fan of, yeah, the ivory conduits for all power costs. That's the... Yeah. Okay, you're getting tier three. No, that, that must be in yeah. your unique ones then? That's unique fighting. That's fighting specific. Okay, so you're, you're getting... Um, what is effectively a tier three? Because that's what like they cost thirty, but you're getting them very yeah. early because you're fighting. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it's we we maybe could do some stuff on like optimizing this, but it's it's a lot like fighting is a mess in the code. It's just uh, yeah, unfortunately, it's a mess in the code. It's it's so huge. Like fighting fighting code alone is like bigger than like five other mission trees together. Um, so it's very hard for us to adjust this very nicely, but it should, should be something we do that we limit these to the correct uh, to okay. the correct tiering of your artificial estate. I also very much like the idea of having them be changed based on other factors. Like for this Sky Conduit, uh, it gets boosted or upgraded if you have the trading bonus for Ivory. I like that. That's something really cool. Yeah, that's exactly what I mean with they're very moddable. Okay, so there's a lot of... Yeah, this system is exceptional and it, it can also be expanded, I imagine, pretty easily. Um, is it a case of the you would need to rework the UI if you added like a new Tier 1 invention? You'd need to um, do some UI fudging to move things around? Or would... Uh, no, we already made dummy dummy stuff for everything. Okay. So we can just add stuff. Of course, there is a limit. Like, we cannot, we have to have some limit of what can be displayed. Yeah. Uh, we're currently nowhere touching this limit. And yeah, so we're like, we're not too worried about, uh, yeah, about the limits at the moment. Uh, otherwise, what always can be done is we might be able to do another tab. Right. Like we can make these all a bit smaller and then fit a new a next another tab here if it if it's really needed, but I hope not. 
Okay. The next big change to the artificial system as a whole will probably come when the mechanism in INSEA will get added. Right. Okay. Because they will have special interactions with the system overall. That's really cool. Um, yeah, I think you've answered all the questions that I have. Then, is there anything that you would like to uh, shout out or or uh, explain further, or anything you would like to talk about? Because uh, I look, I'm I'm just I re I really love your new system. It's so cool. Uh, I'm a, yeah, all right, I'm a, I'm a bit of a fanboy, you know. That's 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 just me. It's fine. To all like also people who play with you, if you have comments for the for like balance, etc., there is a thread in Ambenar, and I listen to uh, to the stuff. And so, if you have comments, feel free to come and comment. Yes, for sure. I have. I I will. I will put my own balance concerns there. Clearly, the gnomes need buffing. Um. <laughs> What I would say from my side is, I think people, whenever we sit Steam, if some people don't like playing Bitbucket but still watch this content, I give it a try. We really all recommend it. Um, and also give the middle mode a try. Because that is also, I think, a unique option once it's completely finalized. Right. Where you have both as a combination, because that is also a unique feeling. Too. Yeah. Oh, you didn't explain that for I think people, people are overseeing that. What? That's oh. that's something you get at the very start of the game. You can choose yeah. pure artificery, yeah. middle mode, and uh, pure mages. Uh, uh, only after everything. Uh, only when you unlock artificery. Right. Everybody else starts in mage only mode. Right, right, right. Um, yes. So yeah, middle uh, going middle of the road and having... Is there going to be some kind of interaction then between the mages and the artificers working together somewhat in the middle mode is that is that going to be anything to do with that so there actually should already be stuff there in the game it's just that most people haven't ever seen it um yes i i hope so it's just a question of um honk your horn if you like somebody devices. putting it into the game right um, all right. Well, thank you very much for uh, bringing me around the artifice system. Just once again for me, thank you for putting this in because I I fucking love it. I think it's amazing, um, and I am super excited to see where it goes from here. Uh, I want I want more more inventions, more. Oh, it's, yeah, it's such a cool system. I love it. Um, but yeah, thank you very much, uh, Tears and Wag, for having a chat with me. It's been a pleasure. Sure. Yes, thank we you. Also, thank yes. you for this opportunity. Hey, it's, I, it's no no trouble at all. So, uh, yeah, good luck with the rest of your uh, campaign, and maybe we'll have uh, another chat later. Yeah, sure. sure. Right. We will see. Bye bye. Bye bye. Fucking love it. I I don't know if I managed to explain just how much that is entirely all of my shit, but it is so my shit. I love it. Uh, but there is a Canor War going on, uh, and actually a fat Canor War. I'm not sure what uh, sparked this off, but we have on the sides, the small country is fighting against, um, we've got uh, Busala and is Ovdal Tungur a player? I believe it is. Yes, it is. Um, so we've got Ovdal Tungur, um, we've got uh, Busala, we have, I think Galen is in the war, yes they are. Um, and we have Carnator, which is also a player, yes. Uh, versus uh, the small country, Reveria, Aranen. Uh, Corveria is not an player, but they are owned by uh, Aranen under a PU. So this is Anfant War. Uh, it looks like the front lines are... I mean, Ovdal Tungur is invading into Aranen, but mainly it looks like the main front lines are going to be around the uh, Laurentine area. Uh, so there we go. We'll have that going on. And it was declared on a team with half the members uh, missing. So let's have a look here. We have... Uh, Carnator has declared the war, so let's go from their perspective. 
Uh, they've declared the war upon the small country. Uh, small country... I can't remember who their specific ally was. Was it Magisterium, perhaps? Because I know it's not Reveria, because their ally is Bjarnric. Um, maybe it's actually Galeen. No, because they're on opposite sides of the war. That's stupid. Uh, I don't have my um, cheat sheet open. So let me see if I can find that while we are paused. And we can have a look at who do be on each side. Uh, small country's ally is supposed to be Aranen. Okay, uh, so they're together. Then Reveria is with Bjarnric, but Bjarnric is not involved. Um, but yeah, it actually looks like a, a three-player versus... Mm, Someone cost is not involved, so one, two, three, four. I mean, a 3v4 is not bad. If we look at the numbers on each side, though... Uh, the Carnotaur side has approximately 170,000, whereas the small country side has maybe 140... No, that's more than that. Uh, these two together is roughly 130, 155,000, I would say, roughly. So, definitely they are outnumbered. Um, and also... Uh, I don't know. Because if you look at small country... Every single one of their alliance can, like, get to the main area. Ovdal Tungra is kind of alone on the outskirts, and they have quite a lot of the troops. So, maybe there's a case where these guys just kind of get ignored, and Aranen just moves full on into Busala and Galen to keep them busy, while Small Country ruins Karnatur. Um That could be the case. I feel like Karnatur is the, the, the kind of the thing that's in the most danger here. Uh, but it also looks like we're getting a rehost, so let us uh, get on with that, and we will. Uh, I will come back with this war. Stick around, stay tuned. We are getting back into it. Um, I have some information that is of uh, of of use in this war in the uh, in the west. Um, so let us tag on over to here. This war is not what it first assu uh, I assumed it was. Because here, Carnator, Conquest of Redgate, I'm thinking, oh, Carnator is the aggressor here. Not so. Not so. Uh, Carnator was at war with Rubyhold. During that war with Rubyhold, Small Country vassalized them and now have basically joined a defensive call to arms against Carnotaur, and now Carnotaur is unable to call its AI allies into the war. Uh, for example, Sorenkost. Um, but now Sorenkost is not AI, so maybe Zemas is going to get called into this war now. Um, uh, if we tag on to here, they can have a call to arms. Uh, so, there is a little bit of uh, salt, etc. here about, uh, maybe this not being the most fair war ever, uh, declared because, uh, Akis Akisik, which is the ally and teammate of, and I will find it in just an second, um, is the ally of of Doltunger, who is in the war, uh, is not around. Uh, they didn't uh, manage to get into the game today. Uh, so we have a situation where uh, this war was declared sort of ad hoc and uh, against not all the players. It's still relatively even. I feel like if Sorenkost and Akasik both got involved, it might actually be less balanced than it currently is. So I'm less, I'm less unhappy with it than I otherwise would be. Um, but yeah, there is a naval battle going on. Uh, this is actually a pretty important naval battle because it prevents uh, people from marching over. Although, uh, having said that, uh, Carnotaur and Galeen are on the same side, so this is always going to be crossable. Um, and it looks like they won anyway. So, small countries, navy defeated, and Magisterium is going to be relegated to not taking part. So, this might have been... A somewhat toxic occurrence. Um, but it doesn't look like it's going to pay off for the small country. 
So we'll see how that goes. Um, meanwhile, we've got Abdul Tunker just slowly making their way forward. They're not doing anything too rash, too fast. Uh, they do have, um, a, mm, I'd say a decent sized navy, but that's 19 galleys is not exactly the best thing I've ever seen. And Ovdal Tungra's navy is probably going to be stronger than it. Uh, so we'll uh, keep looking around and see if there's any going to be battles soon. Uh, but yeah, this is, I think, the only player war going on at the moment. Yes, it is. So let's, uh, let's see. Carniter. This is a tag that I've only re seen very recently. It was in a uh, multiplayer that I was not involved in, but I'd uh, spectated on. A little bit and um it's the first time that i saw it uh the ideas are uh tech costs we got an attrition some improved relations prestige advisors infantry shock is quite nice um monarch mill skill is quite nice construction cost nice manpower and primary culture very nice free policy so everything that conjure has right now is pretty uh well i mean their traditions are decent but these are Kind of eh. Advanced cost is very nice. But all of their military and really good buffs are coming later. So killing them early, probably a uh, a, a good idea. Uh, and the small country is complaining that these guys are getting given uh, heavy buffs. Renewed power, infantry combat ability, uh, divine inspiration morale of armies and discipline i'm not sure i entirely agree with this uh are they getting any nerfs no but yeah they're all getting inspiration i will i'm gonna go and uh poke river doge and say about that hey river doge um the uh the the side of a small country is not wrong when they say that the uh, uh, enemy team is stronger they they really are the carnator is a um has the stronger alliance so giving them all of the buffs is maybe not entirely necessary i think i'm not sure if river doge is around right now he's he's muted on discord but we'll see what happens when he arrives back But yeah, there is a lot of troops here. I'm not sure. I mean, Reveria's got some troops around. So uh, a little over 100,000 uh, in this region versus probably around about the same amount. Uh, 40, 65, 80-ish, uh, uh, probably 100,000 here. Um some extra troops coming so there's roughly equal numbers here but then if we look over here uh actually did they lose or no they didn't lose they're just being transported they're abandoning this front um and then there's busala still to come magisterium might be able to hold off them for a little time but yeah i do feel like the uh small countryside is Maybe not as strong as their opponents. Uh, I do think they did just take Miltek 8, uh, which is huge. It, oh, it's actually giga huge. Tactics, combat width, and new units. So if we have a look at their new units, they have... Oh, hello. Hello there. They have five... Did I get dragged in here? <laughs> yeah, I dragged you in here. Um, the small country side in Aronin are complaining a little bit. Um, the, about the buffs that you gave to Carnator. And mm -hmm. uh, basically they're saying that uh, their side is stronger than theirs. Uh, basically the Carnator side is already stronger. And mm. they have Bjarnric. Looking at them, in. I do kind of agree. I mean, Carnator can also call in Sorncost. Um, um, yeah, I do think the, the sides are more balanced uh, before the buffs. Hmm. So, to for to preface it, I gave those out before. Um, one when Avdal Tungir was just completely desynced, so they were like a non-factor in the war. Um, a Cossack 
is an AI and won't be joining. Sornkost is now a player, but I had no clue if they were joining or not. We right. ended up doing a rehost, so that's why they're in. Um, Vyonric can join the war, and they're like 50k troops, I think. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Vyonric is worth significantly more than Sornkost here, and the actual small country is giga strong. Yeah, they I did don't know how you see how many troops the small country has. Yeah, so I think it's like 80k troops. They're also half the ha halfling, right? So they can call on a bazillion mercs, and they have like infinite money, which is probably like probably the most significant factor for them. Uh, yeah, there's so many, there's so many mercs in Kanor. Yeah, true. Yeah, they see like they could they could raise up another 20, 30k troops and still probably be in a positive income. Um, yeah, but I'm just I'm just passing along um, the complaints gotcha. and. Uh... I was AFK. <laughs> yeah, no worries. I, I stepped away from it. I needed some water. I was like, I've been sitting here for too long. Um, I, I mean, I'll, I'll examine it, right? Like, if, if it looks like it, if it for some reason it flips, right? It's, I can still, I can undo things or I can push push some push some favor towards the other side if it looks like it's just way over, like the, the seesaw is way too much in one direction. Right. Okay. Um, but from, from like an immediate standpoint, it was like a surprise war for Carnotaur, for instance, right? Because they they vassalized uh, Ruby Hold in order to attack them without being able to call on their AI allies, which I, I mean, think was that... a little bit. I think it was a little bit out of spirit of the game, right? I feel the, like that's kind in. of fine. Vassalizing someone that someone else is at war with, I'm okay. I'm personally okay with that. Yeah, I I think the it's the stipulation there though is that Sornkost and Akasic were AI that were players, and right? Thus, thus, they wouldn't join the war because it was technically an offensive war. And it was an offensive war that had been going on for more than a year, I think. So they wouldn't be able to call them regardless. Well, Sornkost can now be called in. I'm not sure if they're going to or not, though. I think they, they haven't done so far. Separatists. They probably had to resolve their Separatists first. Uh, there's also another war going on. The uh, Ice Gale has attacked uh, Magargama. And we're going to see... What? What's this? I, I, don't, I don't see a, a W here for Magargama at all. Do they still have, um... They lost their bonus, right? Yeah, it should have gone away four years ago. How does Ice Skill have vision of them? Um... They could have stolen maps, I guess. Uh, the tech has been there for it. I feel like mm. if Magargama had waited until that 22k had actually gotten some morale, they would have maybe been able to win this battle. Yeah, that's possible, though I think they were going to crack before. I think they wanted to get, like, Delma to surprise. They're doing more casualties, at least. Oh, you know what? I think actually they may... No, never mind, they cracked. Yeah, and they, they cracked on morale as well. Yeah, the uh, right. the Kobold line started to break, but then Magargama's, like, line shattered from morale. Did uh, Everest crash? What happened here? Uh, Evergreeny is oh. what tag again? Oh, that's, uh, oh, telexamai has been attacked or is in a war now. No, they're, they're an offensive against AI. Uh, they've just been called to arms from Lip Macat. Oh, it's a, uh, Defender of the Faith. Uh, yeah, they don't get a pause for that, unfortunately. <laughs> <I'm not> <laughs> <pausing>. <laughs> the only thing you get a pause is for his unconditionals. Yeah. Uh, he's calling for you for a rule break. You might want to yeah. go talk to Evergreedy. Yeah, I probably got pinged and I missed it. All right, let's see. All right, well, I'll be back. Uh, where are they? Enjoy. I wonder what kind of rule break uh, we're looking at here. Yeah, I want to see a battle here because uh, with with small country being on the uh, attack ahead, that's huge. Um, and Carnator is unable to get that for another two years, one and a half years. So it's kind of huge. Uh, Galean, how long until you can get it? Miles away. Busala, miles away. Uh, Tungur, miles away. Okay, so that's Huge for them. Riveria, uh, miles away. I don't know if 
Yanrik is going to get involved, but let's just assume no. Aranen have miles away. Okay, so it's literally just small country, but they have the biggest army anyway. And they're the biggest piece of the pie. Karnatur, 40k. So the amount of numbers on each side that will have Tech 9 within the next couple of years is it's literally just these two. And small country just has way more of them. So, a battle here I do think is going to go small country's favor, though you do have to remember these guys have extra morale, 4.86 because of the 15% divine inspiration. Um, 4.7 though, like, if they're not far behind. They are certainly not that far behind. So, we'll, uh, when this gets unpaused, we'll get going. Uh, X Driver, thank you very much for the uh, gift sub. I appreciate that very much. Um... Very much appreciated. And we'll uh, we'll see how this goes in the future. Um, I look tired. How long did I stay up with Man Lords? I uh, stayed up until uh, 7 or so with Man Lords. Then I was awake until about 10 o'clock in the morning. Then I slept and woke up at 4 o'clock in the evening. And then this game started at 5. So uh, that, that's been my day so far. I woke up. I ate something. I, I am now casting been a good day so far uh but yeah there's a lot of money here whereas you're already losing money so losing money and not at force limit is kind of crazy what kind of problems is this hills so the the options here are do we attack him while we have a hill bonus or do we allow him to take the fort and then attack into west Ham, which is farmlands also i could have sworn west Ham was uh uh, what's it called? Uh, urban, but I guess not. Ruby Company... I'm oh, sorry, Ruby Hold. They could probably make that happy. I don't know. We'll see. Imagine if I had to play Adenica. No, no, Adenica is dead. They're over. Uh, yeah, Boosla is pushing into Magisterium now. Though there is naval dominance now for... Uh, the small countryside. So maybe we're going to see a case of Magisterium being able to escape. Oh no. Why is there no fort on Irrigate? Holy. Build a fort here. It is so much more. I know. Mountains. Love mountains. Love mountains. Mountains are great. However, this is a crossing, it's a straight up crossing. If these guys attempt to cross into Eargate, you beat the crap out of them on Eargate, they try and retreat, boom, your boats, boom, you've murdered so many. It is such a throw to not have this here. Uh, looks like there is a naval combat going on. Uh, and small countries actually retreat. I don't... The naval, naval side of this war, I don't know who has the advantage. Uh, but yeah, they allowed the, the fort to be taken. No battles have taken place so far on this side that I have seen. Um, actually, there was a huge battle in Redgate that Carnotaur lost. Um, and then another battle in Redgate, but that's wiping out a small force. And then, yeah, lots of naval battles. How long are they going to be able to just allow the pillagery of this area? Um, here, West Ham is getting absolutely destroyed by um, Tungur. That's a huge amount of numbers that they can't really compete with. Uh, this army is going to get wiped as soon. You need to move. You need to move right now. This army needs to move. Imme no, it's too late. Oh, it's not too late. It's not too late. And they didn't even need to scorch. R more running. More. Right. Yep. There we go. Fort. Fortress. I need to see a fortress right here, please. If you have to hold this, then you know what would be absolutely hilarious though? Get naval dominance just for a moment. Assault this fort. Assault this fort. Take this. Make sure that the troops from over here can't get over here. Aranen would be completely sacrificed in that if that in that scenario. Though the fact that Aranen's just standing there doing literally nothing is certainly an concern. Because while small country is going to be doing mad work here, 
as soon as these guys think, you know what, don't care about Magisterium, let's march down, march across, march here, link up, then it is once again Jover. So, yeah, I don't know. This this is worrisome. Tunger and Busala could absolutely go and uh, ruin the day of a uh, small country whose day is pretty good so far. Uh, Magisterium could also go and occupy Dame's Teeth, which would be really, really good for them. They occupy Dame's Teeth, they can then not get trapped, basically. They can march around freely because Tooth's End has been sieged. Also, this is now an ancient forest, which is super interesting. Uh, let's go and check out this Magurgama War. Uh, by the way, switch uh, tag. The, remember to tag the, oh, the yes. funny. Just give so me a we're on Varmha right now, and it's is it going to happen in January? Oh wait, he's already gone. Okay, something funny's happening in 1499 with this, so we're going to stick on this for a couple of months, because otherwise I would be having issues. Wouldn't a fort on Eargate break for to since your rules? Well, in that, in that case, delete the fort in Moonmount. Also, I have no idea what the adjacency rules are in this server. Uh, I can see rules suggestions. I don't actually see rules. Just in general. Uh, I have no idea what the rules are here. But this is a more valuable fort, even though it's not the correct... Uh, Type, you know, it's not it's not a mountain, but it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. They are now on Karn uh, Karnator. Oh no, they've re retreated from it. They are, however, on Ordoin. And forgive the 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 fog of war. I I just don't want to miss this uh, Varamhar event. Um, and I feel like I absolutely would. Um, if we move away, All right? But it's less than a month away now, so let us go here. Census of all Halan. Yep, that's cool. I think we're gonna get Varmha returning, potentially. Mayhaps. When are we gonna get this? Missing localization. Country changes to in... Yo! <laughs> Yo! Uh, okay. Racial administration change. Man has become an infernal bastion. An Elysian warehouse that stored very valuable goods suffered a Nazan attack a few days ago. Worryingly, our informants claimed that some kind of evidence linking the perpetrators to us was discovered. Of course, we've taken no part in it, but even if Elysian is not certain of the authenticity of the evidence, they have become extremely suspicious of us. Uh, and now they've got the masquerade incident as well. Ain't no way you're still giving them the masquerade. So, they no longer... Oh, they do exist here, and this is the Infernal Host... Um, Shadow Swamps. Uh, there's still New Sun Cult. Why is the religion not changed from New Sun Cult? Oh, uh, no. Uh, did, did something mess up here? Well, yeah, let's have a look at their ideas. Shock damage, leader siege, uh, cost of advisors, movement speed, all power cost is quite nice. Prestige, spy construction, good domestic trade power, siege. Occult ideas, excuse me please. What are these occult ideas that we are speaking of? Uh, is this something special for the Dev Clash or is it something we can look forward to? Uh, let's have a look. Artificery bonus, yo -ho. Okay. It's kind of eh. Unlocking every occult idea inexorably chains your nation to the prime material and just might swing the pendulum of fate in your favor. Okay, then. So, let's have a look around. 
you have any... You still have your cores over here. Uh, I wonder, are you going to be able to expand through this game? I feel like this is a next week thing. Um, but there's also, for example, uh, in... Where is it? Ginfield. The river is red because there's a whole bunch of stuff going on. Uh, are they going to be able to pour through that? Who knows? Uh, there is an battle! An battle! And the small country has won said battle. I missed most of that. I apologize. Uh, but Aranin is now getting involved. Okay, they are now getting involved. That's fair enough. Uh, I would march on this while it has zero morale. Like, uh, maybe you're caught by the fort, actually. Um, yeah, caught by the fort. Okay. Um, after Arcane Reveria was saying stuff in chat. Okay. Let's stick with this for a little bit longer. But yeah, okay, so Varamha, they haven't returned, but they are now the Infernal Legion. And I need to, like, have this close properly. There we go. Still Varamha ideas. Uh, is that what Varamha ideas are? For real? It totally is. Okay. So, I, <laughs> I feel like there was more that was supposed to happen here. Because, uh, nothing happened. Man's just building a marketplace. He's just been turned into an infernal host, but yeah, let's build a marketplace. It's all, it's all chill. <laughs> War in Escan as well? Yo. Arian and Ibava versus Hammerholm. Kakapo has, uh, experience in dealing with external threats invading, uh, him while he owns... Uh, Castana, so we'll see how he gets on with this. Uh, the dub? The dub? No, no. The, oh, wait, the still, the still the dub? If this doesn't get in, in time, and it didn't, oh! Oh, the dub, the Kakapo W! Let's go! Uh, he's also allied with Azra Expedition, which should be coming in. Azra Expedition really should be, uh, looking to form Kugdir to get that linked mission tree going on. Um, I'm not sure why, other than let me finish these missions, or let me finish these reforms, but really that should be a case of, get let's get cooked here. Uh, Balrogin taking land in the Dwarver, I want to help you, wait, how is Balrogin getting land in the Dwarver? Oh, they are, actually, right here. Uh, is there a war going to happen here? Maybe uh, one Zeeman wants to murder over here? I don't know. Dubious Pyromancer is stolen gem. I mean... I, I feel like you, you of all people, do not have the uh, the chops to, uh, to say do not go here. Uh, let's check on Magargama real quick. After that one fort, there's actually been very little movement. Uh, Zabudo Dask, um, love that name, love the flag, uh, hate the map color, not gonna lie. Um, is helping, but it's not really with that many troops. 14k, surely you can manage to muster up more than that. Not really, okay. Uh, so, that's, that's a war that is occurring, okay. Uh, do we have any more battles here? Uh, it looks like maybe Small Country lost a battle. You know what? This is... You allowed them to get across the strait. Terrible idea. I imagine they're coming back to get their morale back, but they need to fight here. They can't just allow Magisterium to get fully occupied. They need to stop that. What's Karnata's mission? Any bonuses to warfare? Eh, I mean, that would help. Not while you... Maybe, yeah, wait, save it for the next guy. King Sulfa from Vertesk. That 6k, though, is so useful. I mean, you take that instantly, right? Or not. Oh, battle coming in. They split their troops too much. 
That's a that's a big W for small country. If he can just pick off individual armies like this, that's going to be so handy. Fighting on the ancient forest is probably going to be their next bet. Get the morale back, get that uh, reinforcement tick, and then just go in. Shame they didn't take it while they were still on that fort. Um, Magisterium trying to fight off on the mountain. It's. I feel like for small country, they are the strong one. Like they have Miltech Nine, Carnage, and now does as well. They really need to be like, okay, we got to go save Magisterium, fight on this mountain because as soon as this falls, uh, Magisterium is dead. All right, they're out of here. They can probably be a uh, separate piece at some point as well. Twenty-eight. As soon as this falls and this falls, especially Anbancost falls with its fifty-three dev, it's gonna be over. Run away. I guess maybe the only option that these guys have is to just rush Karnatur, make sure that they are the ones that get fully occupied. But again, navally, it's switched around again, and now it's the southerners that have the dominance. Hmm. Have some respect. That's the marketplace where horse armor DLC was invented. I wish we could go back to a, a time when horse armor was the worst DLC to exist, because holy shit, I miss those times. Though at the same time, I feel like horse armor DLC was the the beginning of this toxic level of horribleness that we currently have. Uh, Hammer Home getting the dubs in once again... Uh, yeah, they're just doing really well. They're smashing the shit out of Ibavar, of all tags. Ibavar is getting beaten. It's crazy. Um, if only he had fortified his southern lands, uh, and then didn't have, you know, a couple of AI just randomly being annoying. Like, Order the Iron Scepter, they've vassalized a couple of these guys. Uh... Cargrin's king will die a horrible, horrible death. What for? Uh, Jelly Jr., the second Varamzwir. I mean, he's still got his uh, whole mission of, of turning him into a god. But he's got the Samatel Masquerade going on. And he's, he's not even anywhere near Bulwar. I feel like something here has gone wrong. Uh, oh, shit. Oh, we see... We see uh, a turnaround. I'm sorry I missed that, but the uh, small country did finally decide that yeah, we actually do need to save um, the uh, Magisterium. Magisterium's gonna assault it, but again, this is the this is the thing. This is what needs to be saved. Oh, uh, we do have another battle. Small country turning around and smashing into the Carnotaur lines, and while Carnotaur's involved, you know the. On the front line, the casualties shouldn't be too bad, but as soon as anyone else is involved who does not have the next tech, like, this is going to be a, a, a horrific battle. The casualties here are going to be absolutely disgusting. Uh, because, clearly, I mean, the, shame I can't see the, the battle at the end, but... Um, that tech is just so big. It's such a huge uh, pain point to not have it. Tech 9 is extra troops. Like, if we have a look at these troops that we've got right now, men at arms, three pips. We look at the troops and the ankle shankers, five pips. That's, yeah, huge. Uh, and Tungur here, I'm pretty sure they have only three pips. No, they've actually got six pips. They took Tech 9. They took Tech 9. Okay, so Tungur's troops are actually uh, pretty sick as well. Uh, is there another war going on that I missed? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, Tater's pause, I'm not sure why. But we shall see. Uh, 
don't know, maybe it's a, a, re, uh, a hot join because it's the 28th would make sense. God, I love war. Great. <laughs> no, I I no, I will. I love war. It's kind of one of the main reasons I dislike Vicky 3. But after this war, we are going to be talking uh, with somebody who's been working on the Vicky 3 mod for Enbana. Um, and I will attempt with all my might to not let my disdain for the game uh, shine through. That it will, will be as... As, as neutral as possible. <laughs> um, see how that goes. <laughs> Yo, okay. I mean, if Carnotaur loses this and they manage to actually get some troops on the pearls, like, this is going to be the key thing, right? Um, Carnotaur won't be 100%ed as long as they hold the pearls. But if there can be a naval build up to the point where. Um, Small country is able to defeat that navy. Actually, how many... Oh, they're down to 10 ships. Okay, they got absolutely smashed then. Naval-wise, the losses are 34 lost ships versus... Sorry, no. 30 lost ships versus 37 lost ships. Um, yeah, small country has a suspiciously small navy. For this period in the game, like, they should probably have a navy of 100, honestly. Um... What is their naval force limit? It's 49. They can totally afford to go to 100. Magisterium has a bit of siege ability. I'm not sure if small country would be any better, so it's probably fine. But yeah, if small country has a navy of 10, and they have lost only uh 18 boats they had 28 boats total and they have a force limit of 47 49 clearly what we can quite confidently and accurately determine that this is is just a straight up fucking skill issue uh but here we have tungur marching around what is that general six shock five six is a huge general um I think this is going to be the turning point. I think these Tungur troops are going to be enough to push back the small country here. Galen is also coming. There's plenty of opportunities for cuts here. Um, Reveria doesn't see the danger that they're in. They're up here. It's like, ah, oh, la-di-da, sieging Royal Sard. Uh, whereas the, the enemy are preparing troops. I mean, I don't know why he doesn't see it, because uh, small country sees it. He sees it as well. My 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 brother in Christ. My brother no. My brother in my brother in harmony. No, whatever. My brother in harmony. You need to do something here. Uh, there is a five six involved on that side. A three five only for the small country side. Uh, that's good cleaning up small uh, remnant troops. But we're gonna see. A lot of reinforcements come in. As long as they don't overstack, things will go just fine. There's 31,000 reserves versus 83,000 reserves. This is overstacked to absolute bullshittery. This is stupid. This is way... Eh, I mean, you're, you're reinforcing too early, but way better than this. It is completely unnecessary to put everybody in instantly. 40,000 reserves, 50,000 reserves... Uh, Morale-wise, the Southerners are losing. Uh, I would definitely wait until that gets a morale tick. There, he's going to march and get there on the 6th. That's intelligent. The Southerners' uh, cannons have almost all retreated. This is the army that's going to maybe swing it. Oh, but the rolls are not helpful. Um, and wait. Magisterium throw. The Magisterium throw here. I feel like they could have won that if you didn't retreat. You don't retreat until you get actual, um, you know, cannons on the front line. And let's be honest, in the latest version of EU4, cannons don't really go on the front line. Because cannons just fucking retreat first. I feel like this was the Magisterium throw. 
Um, yeah, I think also we're looking at really terrible uh, generals for everyone except the Southerners. That 5-6 from Susurus, Cow Loved, is huge. Everyone else, terrible generals. Um, 35, 75, 46. 46 and you managed to get that is crazy. That's not a that's not a, a powerful mage ruler either. It's just you just got super lucky. And uh, small country saying they have twice our troops. That's not not technically true. They have about twenty thousand more troops. No, you have twenty thousand more troops, uh, but. Uh, take away 60,000, actually. Because Aaron and... I mean, that's... Yeah. Uh, who is 500 memo? <laughs> like, that's... That's that's dumb. That's stupid. Like, I can see both sides. You're both wrong. <laughs> uh, but it looks like we're going to get another rehost, unfortunately. So, uh, I will be back with, uh, the... You know, the conclusion, hopefully, of, uh, this war.